Hello and welcome to the Das Nostalgia Podcast, episode 13. As usual, I'm your host, Anatoly, and today I have another very special guest with me. Uh, for your listening pleasure, sir, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Francisco Gonzalez. Uh, people on the internet might know me as Grunislav. Mm. So, sir, good sir, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Well, thank you, thank you for asking me, good sir. Today we're going to talk about a special topic that's near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about adventure games, but not just any adventure games. No, sir. A special series of adventure games. The Sierra Discovery series of adventure games. Oh, I can barely wait. I can't either. See, this is not just a, an informative or a, a fun podcast. It's also an educational podcast because we'll be learning about all sorts of crap. Oh, very much. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I have um, replayed all of these games in, in preparation for this podcast. And let me tell you something. I have learned a lot. Yeah? Yes, I uh, a lot, a lot. And I can't wait. Did you just... learn about the intended subjects or did you just learn... <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've learned to hate certain things. I've learned to love <laughs> other things. Uh, it was just a whole spectrum of emotion. Um, but uh, before uh, we dive into that, I know I didn't ask you about this, but <laughs> but do you remember your first um, experience with like a, a IBM PC or compatible and oh, video games? Man. Uh, vaguely, I think. Probably my first experience with an IBM PC was a really crappy uh, 286 that I got. And uh, I actually played most of these games on that PC. I know I at least played the Castle of Dr. Brain on that PC. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think the first like PC game I actually played was probably uh, either Hugo's House of Horrors or... <laughs> One of the, so it was something shareware. I know it was probably like because I had I had this cousin who was really into into computers and stuff, and so like they actually she actually and her husband like helped me upgrade to a four eighty six. Wow, nice. Um, but I remember she gave me a whole bunch of like shareware discs, including like Commander Keen and stuff. So that's that's sort sort of how I got into like the whole like. Apogee platformers, which was going to be the original topic of our podcast. It was. So yeah, that, that was pretty much, it has to have been around 1991 or 1992 or something like so that. So it's either like a, a very a very good uh, game or, or a very shitty one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I do remember, I do remember when we, I was in fourth grade when we upgraded to our 486 because I remember uh, uh, faking being sick so that I could stay home and play with the new computer. Nice, nice <laughs> yeah, one. That's, plus, we had like a lot of homework that day, and I was just like, I don't want to do homework. I want to play on my computer. So, yeah. Yeah, very familiar. Just to show you yeah, where my nah, point It's familiar, fine. familiar feeling. Um, all righty, so let's get to the, to the Discovery series, shall yeah, we? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's discover what we can about these games. Yeah, b uh, because of, I guess, uh, recent events, I will... I will have to put out a disclaimer that we're going to discuss a lot of Sierra-developed games, uh, which, uh, you know, I have a lot of fond memories uh, about. And if whoever is listening doesn't like what I have to say about them, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best disclaimer I've ever heard. That's the best disclaimer I'm going to give, too. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, like, I love them. Uh, I grew up with them. I played them, and uh, uh, I still do, obviously. So uh, uh, you know, I'm going to discuss them to, to the best of my ability. To you know, a as a person today versus you know a kid uh, twenty something years ago. Sure. Yeah, I definitely feel a a, a definite uh, difference of opinion in absolutely. A lot of them. Based on playing them now yes. and having played them when I was a child, so yes. especially you know some of them I I play somewhat regularly. Well, I guess one of them, <laughs> uh, and the rest I haven't touched in a very long time. And m yeah. my opinions d differ rather drastically in, yeah. in like both ways too, like in in both good and bad. I, mm. I I see very different things. So I'm not a kid anymore. I'm not going to discuss this as I used to, uh, you know, play them. 
uh, for the first time while you know all those things were new and exciting and we didn't know any better so so in other words what you're saying is that you're removing the nostalgia from the dos nostalgia podcast uh no no i'm, I'm trying <laughs> like i'm gonna i'm again nostalgia is always gonna be there so if i have any stories to, to sure. share uh, as uh, as we discuss in the games i of course will because sure, you know, yeah. that's what we're here for basically so uh, i guess well is there any kind of a historical context to give before before we start or sh- should we just plunge into it because you uh, know, I think we I mean there's a couple of, of things to mention for a couple of games but I think we'll just take it as we go yeah all right yeah so like you know it's a uh, edutainment was still uh, uh, in its height this is actually early 90s is the time where companies started to get into edutainment the ones that didn't know anything about games or software or whatever so there's a lot of edutainment titles coming out uh, of various quality uh, made by a variety of companies, you know, like it's the trend that started in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, Sierra jumped on the bandwagon in in many ways. I mean, they had other stuff besides the Discovery uh, series, but for some reason, those specific six titles are actually labeled as a, as a Discovery series. What's interesting, too, about them, I just realized, is like they waited until they had gone into like the, the whole VGA uh they they came out like within the span of just like three years. Mm-hmm. They waited until they they had upgraded to their VGA point and click uh, SCI engine. Yeah, yeah. There were no there were no like parser AGI uh, parser um, edutainment titles, which is right. kind of strange. Well, Unless they, you count they, Gold they, Rush they, as one. Uh, but that's not really also, one. well, not edutainment, but they had like children's games. You know how many versions of mixed oh, up, yeah, that's mixed true, up yeah. Mother Goose there was. You know, yeah, like yeah, fifty. Sure. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, we start with the uh, Eco Quest, the search for Cetus. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, which is uh, a 1991 title, the, the earliest, the first of the Discovery series. And does that one have the logo up front? I. Uh, I think it does, no, right? I think it does. It does. Actually. Yeah, no, it, it might not, right? No, okay. it just boots up with uh, Sierra. It it's got like just the blue Sierra logo with the bubbles in front of it. Oh, ah, yeah. that's right. And they go blue, blue, blue. Yeah, like yeah. Somebody yeah. recorded them like out of the toilet. Yeah. It's pretty. It's <laughs> pretty. Probably. It's pretty amusing. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, here we go. What do you have to say, sir? You, you go. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> Because people might uh, actually listen for another ten minutes before they shut this off. <laughs> okay, well, EcoQuest One. What can I say about EcoQuest One? Well, I remember I got EcoQuest One at some point. Um, I think I just got it because I was just like, "Oh, this is a new game." I kind of gone through most of the Sierra catalog, and I I saw that EcoQuest was another one. And you know, you always get the little magazines with the with the old. Sierra games that tell you mm-hmm. about all their other games and I remember having seen the screenshots and thinking oh this looks kind of cool underwater or whatever and I got the uh, I got the disc based version I never played the CD version which I know you had the uh, <laughs> I had for, for, the pleasure for of the playing. first time uh, I it happened a few days ago I've never yeah. touched the CD version before and we'll get I, to, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, I, that's actually one of the few uh, Sierra games that has a CD version that I've never played the CD version of. But seeing as it came out in 1991, I can only imagine that it was one of those. Well, I, I can do more than imagine because I've heard <laughs> it's of it. But I, I'm aware that it's one of those where the Sierra employees were the ones voicing most of the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but EcoQuest One, I mean. You know, it, it it's it's interesting because it's very much an adventure game, but it's also you know it's it's an edutainment game. So you have to give Sierra props for just being able to mix education with with an with an adventure game. Because I guess I mean I often used to think you know when I was in school that like when I was studying you know chemistry or or math or boring stuff like that, I used to think, man, if if this was an adventure game. If there was, if like I could digest this information as right. something I was actually enjoying, I would be right. a genius. I would learn so much more about mm-hmm. this. And I'll talk more about that when we get to Pepper's Adventures yeah. in Time. But, like, yeah, like I, I just, I don't know. It was, it was commendable of them. But, I guess. I mean, I mean EcoQuest, I, as, just in general, yeah. right? The entertainment field is actually very difficult despite the abundance yeah. of titles from 80s and 90s i mean the large amount of them are so misguided and yeah, you, you can I never mean, you almost never find a game that strikes a perfect balance no. between is it 
is it just feeding you force feeding you the information is it yeah. just lazily quizzing you or is it just more you know sometimes it's more of a game than an actual you know it, with very little entertainment value so you have to really strike the balance i mean does to to me personally does eco quest do that the first one i mean it does but in a kind of like an overly preachy way uh yeah i mean as a game it's is it definitely has its flaws and i mean certainly it, it came out at a time when you know the, the environment was really a big thing i mean you had mm -hmm. captain planet on tv yeah. and so you have eco quest you know kind of going on that whole thing like oh take care of your environment kids you know pick yeah. up the, everything recycle your trash blah 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 but yeah it's I mean, it's it's not as heavy-handed as it could have been, but it's still kind of yeah, heavy-handed. How, how it could have been is coming later. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, well, my thing is, like, uh, for those who haven't played EcoQuest, uh, you know, it's a game about, uh, you play a little boy, Adam, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, his father, Noah. He's, like, an environmental scientist or some shit, some shit yeah. like that. And their mo his mother's dead, although they never tell you why she's dead. Yeah, something, something. My guess is that he was trying, his father was trying some sort of uh, horrible environmental <laughs> experiment that went wrong and he killed well, his Or maybe mother. they were like fighting off, you know, like when, you know, like sort of like uh, doing like an illegal <laughs> protest where they go against the, you know, oh, like, yeah. like the pirates or whoever, like they clean the things. <laughs> There's some horrible accident that happens. She falls in the water. Yeah. Uh, like oh, it's like that, that shark that they were trying to like free from the nets and then she got just devoured by that shark. <laughs> but it was all in the name of you know nature and science. But my thing with EcoQuest, like right off, uh, right off the bat, it starts. It starts with the room, and no, is like, oh, I'm so pissed off at those uh, uh, yeah, uh, the terrible, bird. terrible people that uh, pollute the thing, and you have to clean the bird. And it's all very realistic, kind of up front. You have to clean the bird, and it's like, and and Adam is like, will the bird die? And no, is like. It might, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, probably. Uh, I was like, "Wow, that's a that's a heavy start," and yeah. it's all very realistic and stuff, except for like the the, the rug that he plays on. Occasionally, oh, he plays yeah, like yeah. silly animations where like there's a periscope coming out of it, a fish jumping on, yeah. and then there comes a point when one of the first things you do is give water to a hamster. Yeah, and he starts doing his little dance. Yeah, he does the, like, the top hat, uh, <laughs> the cane routine, and never stops. I mean I understand why they put that sort of stuff in because I guess they expected, you know, relatively young kids to be playing this yeah. game. So they, they had to keep this stuff in to, like, entertain them. And I remember being entertained by it when I played it. I, I mean, I, I, have, I must have been about, like, 9 or 10 when I first played <clears throat> the first it's Eco Quest. It's fine, but, so, I mean, yeah, but everything yeah. is depicted in this kind of very realistic style, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the backgrounds yeah. are not cartoony. Uh, yeah, exactly. for the most part. And then there's a second scene where you go in and you start playing Frisbee with a dolphin. Yeah. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the dolphin slips and says something. And it yeah. literally just takes the game in this new direction where, where Adam can talk to, to, the to an animals and then he puts on his flippers and scuba diving gear and just goes on the whole undersea adventure without asking his father or, 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 sure. or, or anything. And it's populated <laughs> by those... You know the 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 uh, the dolphin cub, I guess whatever. The, the Delphinius is uh, is his name, and yes. um, he's not. You know he's played somewhat realistically. You know he's a dolphin and thing. But the more you progress through the game, is Delphinius supposed to be a boy or a girl? By the way, it's a boy, I I think. And in, I, in the CD it, version, he's voiced yeah. by like a six year old. So yeah. it's really <laughs> tough to tell. Um, yeah, which is also not one of the worst voices in that game. It's just poorly because the kid cannot perform. Yeah, so uh, all the performance is really really flat. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I'm pretty sure that uh, Adam was voiced by uh, the son of one of the Sierra. Adam, Adam is really good, actually. I don't really? mind either Adam or Noah. They're really good, and especially Adam because he has a lot to say. Actually, hits all the all the yeah. emotional things really, really well. Which is why, like, I was playing the CD version. And I was like, you know what? For a 1991 Sierra title, this is not too bad. And then I got like to the, to the half po to the, like the under the sea portion of the game, and I was like, okay, I take it all back now. <laughs> Um, well, you go on this adventure, and you have you also you know each of the CR games sometimes had like a, a an icon that's unique to it. You know, like Space Quest Five mm -hmm. had like command, Leisure Suit Larry had the zipper, and the Eco Quest has a recycle mm -hmm. uh, button which you use to pick up 
uh, garbage, which I, f I I guess adds to your score if you pick up everything. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Do you have to pick up everything? Because I don't think you I don't have to to finish the game. But if you want a full score, yeah. I mean, you get absolutely nothing for, for yeah. getting a full score. You also but... get very little indication of of have you cleared the area or not, right? Does it does it um, does it does it bloop when when you clear up everything on one screen? Because I don't think it does. I know that when you once you get to the underwater part, like there's a whole bunch of screens. <clears throat> Each screen has a whole bunch of garbage, and when you pick up all the garbage, it gives you a message like "Right, right on, I but, you, but, cleaned up the thing." Yeah, but then later, because you can also pick up garbage later, and I don't think it gives yeah, you a I message. Think that, I think later on it doesn't. Yeah, but, which is kind of yeah. because it wouldn't progress with the story until you picked right. up. The, all the garbage up front, like the shopping carts and all that stuff. But later yeah. on in the story, when it's optional, it actually does not give you an indication if you missed something or not. So it, it's kind of redundant. Well, also, I think the reason it does it there in the under in Illuria, which is the name of the underwater city, is because there's a few on each screen. There's a couple of items kind of that you need uh, mixed in with the trash. Yes. So I think to kind of like separate the fact mm -hmm. that you can pick the stuff up and use it in your inventory then yeah it does that but but yes you're you're right about it kind of tapering off at the end yeah as you progress through the game the more bizarre it becomes basically like you, you yeah you, you start encountering all those archetypal like characters where it's yeah like, it's uh, i i mean do you want to take over because i don't i'm so lost in it that i i i can't even like start i don't know where to start with this <laughs> well to kind of if you want me to just kind of condense it down mm -hmm. yeah basically it's just kind of like you know delphinius takes you back to his his home and you kind of discover by talking to the to the town's fish and the oracle fish and all these other fish that uh, they had a protector named Cetus who is a giant whale which is why the game is called The Search for Cetus and uh, he used to um, get the pollution he used to repel the pollution with his mighty tail <laughs> and uh, since he's been gone missing which I don't know how long he's supposed to have gone missing for because apparently in the time that he was missing this uh, manta ray became mutated by the pollution and turned into this giant horrible creature called Flesh Eater. And so the, the giant flesh-eating manta ray terrorizes the population of Illuria, so they're all afraid. So basically the quest becomes, once you help all the townspeople and gain their trust, or all the town's fish, and gain their trust, um, they're kind of like, oh, you are the chosen one. You're the son of man who has to save us. So then right. you go on they a... Play, on they a, play the prophecy angle. Yeah, yeah. They do the whole prophecy thing. Mm -hmm. And and then so then Adam and Delphinius have to leave the town and then they find, you know, the pollution and then they find Cetus. And it's actually very short, like yes. the quest that they go on. You know, once they... Yeah. The majority of the game, I would say, is pretty much spent like helping all the fish solve mm -hmm. their problems there's because very once you leave, few screens too for like a CR yeah. 1991 adventure it's it's only a handful of actual you know rooms so to speak yeah because once you I mean the main climactic thing after you finish is you go and you you're kind of you know the ocean starts getting uglier I mean you go through this beautiful coral reef and then the ocean starts getting uglier and then you find this cave full of just like pollution or toxic waste barrels, yeah. and then once you clear those out, you find the area where Cetus is, and then Cetus is like, "Help okay. me!" And <laughs> yeah, oh, the voice for Cetus I've is actually. Pretty, I like the voice for Cetus uh, in yeah. the CD version. It's it's one of the better ones in the game. Yeah, yeah and then you sort of they fight the the man array and uh, yeah, ta da you, the the end and they. Yeah, but like in between, you have to help the time the town folks, and you know they all those cartoony animals. There's like a, a, a surfer yeah. stoner fish, oh, God, which is voiced yes. exactly like that in the CD uh, version. It's like, the French hey, dude. Yeah, there's like a French. There's a British uh, Anglophile uh, yeah, the a sea turtle, turtle. Yeah. and they all voiced as cartoony as so you can. The mayor <laughs> in the CD version is by far the worst whoever did oh, that God. voice it's it's pathetically awful well he was a pathetic character in in the text version because he was just yeah, like but that, hoo, 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 i'm the mayor hoo, no hoo. but that that performance is beyond bad the surfer stoner fish is okay and everybody else is fine but some of the performances are like downright intolerable and also i would like to say that the puzzles are really ups like puzzles are really i don't know i don't think yeah. Especially, and it also re requires you to like 
do like certain sequence of events and one point you literally like just pull in stones one by one like 10 of oh, them yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like wouldn't as a kid you don't want to do that like now I'm just clicking on, on yeah. stones and it doesn't really indicate that I'm progressing until there's like you're like five stones in yeah it's the design is is very questionable uh, yeah, obviously. mostly because some, I guess they couldn't yeah. figure out with the tone of the game, it, I guess it was really hard to... Like, it, it seems like what they tried, but they really couldn't nail down where this game was going. You know, so it, it, it bounces between realistic and comical way too often. Yeah. And same thing with the puzzles. You know, like, the puzzles are either, like, oh, you gotta alert uh, people of the toxic waste, uh, or you have to create a cage for the fishermen to not uh, harm the fish. Yeah. Whereas, like, the fisherman's like, well, I'll be. <laughs> uh, wow. It's like, well, like, he's just a damn dumb manatee. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's that. Uh, but well, also. I mean, you have to keep in mind that, I mean, aside from Mixed Up Mother Goose, this is probably one of the first Sierra games uh, where you couldn't die or there was no you like, game die. over or fail state. Yeah, you could die. Uh, you can uh, die in Eco Quest? You could die. It, it pops up the, uh, you know, you can try again. Oh really? Mm-hmm. I've never, the, the man, the manta ray can eat you. If really? you if you stay in the cave, I think. Uh, yeah, oh. I I died a few times. I I specifically tried it because I was like, I wonder oh, wow. if you because I was like, it's a Sierra game. I yeah, wonder I've, if it will give me a legitimate uh, game over. And it pops up a message where it's 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 restore quit or try again. Oh, okay. uh, which is wise, which is what it should have yeah, been. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Because what kid is going to be saving their game yes. constantly? Uh, so, which I, I still did because each one of those games crashed on me at least once. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's true. They're very unstable. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I, I don't remember him being that way. Yeah, uh, me neither. I mean, I, I, uh, actually, Castle did not crash on me, but I don't think Castle ever mm. crashed on me ever in my life. Uh, but just about everything else that was a Sierra title in this list has actually crashed on me uh, at least once or, yeah. or maybe more. Uh, but but yeah, so that's EcoQuest. I mean, it's a somewhat solid, if just a bit misguided, uh, first shot. Yeah. I mean, it's more than mixed up Mother Goose. That's what I you know, which is the the Sierra number one sort of. It at least yeah, because I mean, mixed angle. up Mother Goose is just oh Laziness. let's let's yeah let's fix the fairy tales the eco quest at least has a story and it's trying to you know mm-hmm. it's trying to teach you about environmentalism through that story and i mean it's it's a cute story for kids you know yeah. you feel like you're a real hero at the end and they all come back and they celebrate it's, and it's they're very like, yeah, it's, you did it thank yeah, you it's overly preachy it's it's kind yeah. of in a bit it's it's a bit lazy and it's also there's not a lot of content you know like for especially comparing to like what other yeah. You know, Sierra in 1991 moved on to VGA, and you know they just had King's Quest V come out, and uh, yeah. they've been moving into redoing all of all of their you know original entries in the series to be in VGA and stuff like that. So it's kind of a I don't know how that what they, they had a lot of things going on at the time. I guess is what I'm saying, and I don't yeah, know sure. how, how much of the development power was actually spent. On putting out that, that well, actually, title. it was Jane Jensen's. It was the first game that Jane Jensen ever worked on. Mm-hmm. So there's something. Well, there's a, there's value, a, lot, a lot of people worked on that game. A lot yeah, of people for, worked on a lot of these games, especially yeah, once we yeah. get to the to the last one. There's a lot of people really working yeah, on the fucking game. Yeah. But um, but the game also features a maze of sorts, a kelp maze, and a sliding tile puzzle. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> a kelp maze. Yeah, you know, when you first dive underwater with Delphinius, and he's like, oh, I don't remember how to get to this place. There's like a maze of ah, like. Ah, that's right. Cause you, you it's can, a very easy maze. Yeah, you it's just go like forward, basically. Screens, yes. But, but yeah. it's still a maze. Yeah, slide and tile puzzle almost right up front, basically. Yeah. And, um, that's, that's a trend I noticed in all of these uh, Sierra Edutainment titles is that they take pretty much all of the puzzles that we hate in traditional adventure games and just put them in like mm-hmm. if nothing. I mean, yeah. I would say. Let's see. We have six games, right? Mm-hmm. Four of those games feature a maze, mm-hmm. and, and all of them feature like sliding tile puzzles. And most of them feature <laughs> sliding tile puzzles. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty so, much. So yeah. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Uh, no but, pun intended. But, <laughs> but I guess that's yeah. it. I mean, that's all I have to say about it. Yeah. Shall we actually say if we're gonna recommend recommend the titles? Um, oh yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't I recommend would, giving it to your to all your of the titles, To be honest, just, just for educational value, for historical yeah, just research, for historical purposes. I mean, it's interesting to see what they were doing. I guess. And, yeah. 
Especially if you don't if you don't feel like you know playing them, I'm sure there's let's plays online. I know that I participated in the let's ruin of Ego Quest yeah, one. I've seen and a part two. of that, and yeah, I think yeah, I made Adam's father a white supremacist, <laughs> which is the worst thing ever. But moving on, moving on. Also <laughs> arriving in 1991 comes a an a very interesting sort of oddball title. Uh, and my favorite out of the ones we're going to be discussing today. Not, really? go, not going okay. to bury, not going to bury the lead. I fucking uh, love, love that game. It's a uh, castle of Dr. Brain. Good old castle. Of which Dr. is, I, I am kind of, I mean, I know it's called discovery series, so it's nothing mm-hmm. particularly indicates there. It's not like educational series, but I am questioning the educational <laughs> value of the Dr. Brain series. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Dr. Brain, I would say the Dr. Brain series, probably the most informative thing they can teach you is probably like math related stuff. Yeah, I, I guess even that square. is kind of like lazy. Those are like the worst puzzles in the, in the game. And they're right up front too. Like, oh, like three, I have to three say, of yeah. the least creative puzzles are right in the first fucking room of the game. <laughs> well, <laughs> Island of Dr. Brain had more creative puzzles no. than Castle did, I no. thought. Well, more variety no. in them anyway. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, we but, will. Uh, okay. I, I also would like to note that I did look sp- in the credits specifically, and only the first, the Castle of Dr. Brain game, was uh, was designed by Corey Cole. Yes, that's right, Corey um, Cole. Of did. the Quest for Glory uh, yes. fame. And uh, Laurie because... Cole was credited as, as the lead tester. Yeah, yeah, because the, they, they actually plug Quest for Glory quite mm-hmm. a bit in... Uh, in Castle of Dr. Yes, Crane. and of course in Quest for Glory 4 there's this uh, there's this uh, yes, uh, the, yes. the Dr. Cranium location, yes. which is pretty funny. <laughs> but I do like Dr. Brain, the first Dr. Brain game specifically, probably for the wrong reasons. It, uh, okay. it, it's, it's really all over the place. Yeah, like, it kind of is. And that's what I like about it. It's really, really zany. I think the writing is really funny, which... Uh, it's puns like crazy. Yes, I mean, but... The it, Bulls were famous for their puns in the Quest for Glory games, but oh my god, in this game, there's a lot of really which is terrible like, puns. Which, yeah, but I, I love them. And, you know, it has... it has. A, I also would like to point out that um, there's, a, there's a slider for three difficulty settings... Yes, which affects only about a, uh, a quarter of the game. Uh, yeah, the I rest of the puzzles it. have have no difficulty setting. It's basically yeah. the three math puzzle puzzles in the in the first room, uh, then a couple more puzzles throughout the speed of the robot maze, I think, and the the difficulty of the the uh, what should I call it the the encrypted messages, and also the, the elevator mazes. Are they affected? Yeah, if you are if you, you do- sure. I'm positive because I tried I I tried sliding the difficulty thing. The the good thing about the difficulty slider is that you can adjust it at any point uh, yes, in the game. Which that's is nice. very nice. Yes. But yeah, if if you play on novice, you get not only a map, but you get to switch between a a top down view of the maze and also like an isometric view of the mm-hmm, maze, so mm-hmm. you know what floor you're on and all that stuff. Right, right. If you put it on uh the standard or whatever, it, you only get the top-down view, and if you put it on expert, you get no map whatsoever. So you just have to navigate the maze by trial and error. Oh, that's how I. I don't even look at that because by default it, it goes into like the isom- isometric uh, floor. I didn't even know there was a button to switch to the top-down. Yeah, yeah. I don't use press, it. It's like if you if you press the big red button, you get the map, and if you press it on expert mode, it says out of order. Huh, so. Well, didn't know that, but whatever. Those mazes I discovered actually... that the hard way. I would put the I would put it back down to a novice. For I each honestly, <laughs> I I remember it being pretty difficult, but like the other day, I blazed through all of them, and like like this this the hardest one, I spent no more than two minutes on. It's it's actually because the the grids are actually really limited. Well, let's yeah. let's start from the beginning. Okay. So. Uh, you get. I this. also had a puzzle which took me a really, really long time on expert mode, but uh, we'll really? get to yeah the jigsaw puzzle. Ah uh, yes, well that's <laughs> the, I also didn't didn't really I I did not appreciate that one. Uh, <laughs> it's but, really easy on novice mode. Yes, anyway, it is. Going back to the order, except please. for once you like start start putting all the pieces in one huge pile and you have so yeah. much trouble picking them up again uh, well you put them back in the chest uh, yeah but if you don't uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, sc- you're screwed because it always picks the, the wrong one yeah uh, it does. and okay so uh, castle of dr brain is just this sort of uh, really easy collection of kind of logical puzzle games kind of sort of because it doesn't really stick to that uh, yeah. a lot of times which is what i like about it and it's also very zany so 
you and it's i mean the story is very basic the mm-hmm. idea is you're you you're a guy you're someone who saw an ad in the classified for a lab assistant at dr brain's castle and in order to sort of prove yourself you have to go yeah. through all the the castle and solve all the puzzles so essentially you go through a sequence of rooms in each one of them there's usually uh, a few puzzles for you to solve once you solve them you can progress to the next room where you solve a bit more puzzles you know that's it and then just repeat until the end of the game except for the you know game sometimes breaks it up with with a few yeah. bits here and there and you know right up front you have a simon uh at the door just to get in very easy then mm-hmm. there's three math puzzles which i don't have much to say about them i mean they're they're your <laughs> math puzzles from i hate another. magic squares can i just say I, I find them frustrating and terrible. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically that. So you, uh, the worst, it's the worst. The worst of the game is right up front, basically. Yeah, uh, and uh, also the first floor. I would I would like to talk about the um, the copy protection because if uh, oh, each yes. of the puzzles in the first room gives you a word uh, which you have to look up on the table and enter special symbols on the door. Well, the game has a hand system, which if you win the puzzles without uh without looking at hints you get hint coins yes and those hint coins can be used in puzzles to basically give you very either it's either going to solve a puzzle out right for you or it's just going to give you very clear instructions now those same hint coins can be used to bypass the copy protection really which is a very unusual mode basically if you solve all three puzzles you get three hint coins Uh and then you just go to the door, and you insert three kind coins for each one of the sequences, and it, it punches up uh, huh. uh, the the code that 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 you needed, which is really weird. For yeah, that's pretty self defeating copy protection. It is right yes, there. but I mean I don't know why it was done this way. I hmm. also like to point out that at the later point, the copy protection is also used again to give you hints about which words do you have to look up in, ah, a, yes. in a word search, which is also very unusual, which I appreciate because it's it's a pretty fucking awful puzzle because <laughs> the words can be in any direction including diagonally and backwards yeah. but you know what i like about that word search is that in amongst all of the actual words are the names of the it programmers seems, yeah so and if you yeah. select one it pops and, up a and message if you select them it goes ah! yes <laughs> uh, so uh yeah that still made me laugh when i played it it's pretty funny but like so you get there and you progress so the puzzles range, the variety of the puzzles is actually pretty good uh, when it comes to puzzles, puzzles. Not just math puzzles, but also there are bits where you have to build a circuitry, where you have the easiest one for me convert uh, decimal to binary. Oh, uh, which... God, I had to look up binary for that one. <laughs> like, I forgot how to do binary. It's been years. Oh, man, it's just each number to the power of two. That's it. Yeah, I know. That, that's, that's all you have. But whatever. So <laughs> there's a big variety of those kind of things and then at a uh, half point through the game you also have this great bit which is my favorite where you where you have to program you write programs uh, oh, yeah. for the robot heads which is also and right before that he man that's what i like about this game a lot like you go into the room and there's a the main puzzle is programming the, the robots but before that you get that book puzzle where like there's three people and one of them tells the truth one of them tells the lie and, mm. the, and there's three robots heads that you can pick which two of them will fuck up the instructions and one will follow them closely, but you have to figure out which one it is, you know, because like one of them is telling the truth, one of them is always lying, one of them, and they all say shit about each other. So you have to figure right. out which which thing. And I really like how that sort and of in, prefaces yeah, in, the actual in puzzle. In expert mode, they they break after one use, so mm-hmm. you have to so figure you have out to switch, every single time. Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's a really neat sort of implementation of that and there is also yeah. has like arcade bits like the robot maze where you control well you don't really control uh the little sort of tank thingy but but you you click on the objects in the maze like x's and it can only turn right and stuff so you have to do fast yeah. enough and you have to figure it out how to pick up all the objects in the maze and it has the three first person mazes as we mentioned before yeah sort of like gold box rpg style uh, yeah, that's easily my least favorite part of that it game. It was mine, but you know what? I actually, like, replaying it, um, was it two days ago, I actually found them to be rather easy. Like, I just, I'm mm. just like, dun, 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 dun. I'm, I'm getting through them. It's not so much the fact that they're easy, it's just the fact that they're there. It's annoying. Yeah, it kind of breaks the thing, but I didn't really mm. mind. Uh, I mean, it's not a puzzle, it's just a maze. No, it's not. The yeah, it's there to. Ex- because it's the dumb. game, we should say the game is really short. Yeah. So, uh, those mazes really extend that game's yeah. length. Um, and um, 
what else? You a couple of word puzzles, you know. So you got your hangman, you got the the encryption, the puzzle. encryption puzzle, and um, but then it gets kind of interesting sometimes. There's this this time clock puzzle. Oh yeah, that was a fun one. That one took me a few tries. Second to figure room, out. yeah, because each one of the buttons sets off a different sequence, and you have to figure out how to shut off everything within yeah. a period of time. But then there's also this weird, uh, um, well, not weird, but kind of lazy uh, <laughs> uh, thing with two two uh, sand clocks where you have to. It says like you have like a minute and and f- and fifteen seconds. Yeah, uh, yeah. To press this button, and then you have two clocks. One of them is what's it? Thirty seconds. One of them is fifteen. Uh, in, in expert mode, the one of them was thirty-five and the other is fifteen. Yeah, yes, and you yeah. Have to, I, I mean you they're the same, but they give you a different. They give you a different so. interval. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, like in, yeah. in in the novice, I think it's it's like forty. So you just add them basically. And, yeah, yeah. And in the expert, you have to flip each one several times too. Yeah. To figure so, out whatever. So it's like a nice breaking thing. But then you get to like the observatory or whatever the, the planetarium oh, yeah, room, yeah. and <laughs> you have to like pick out the constellations in the sky yeah. really easy because they're right in front of your face uh, yeah. but really cool and then you assign each planet on this sort of like spinning isometric uh, universe thing like all of those things combined with like it's not just puzzles out of the book you know it's just all those also interactive things that could not be in sure. the book, you know what I'm saying? Like I really like, and even like the match too, where you, you know instead of matching the card, do you match the aliens to the environment? Their planet, yeah. I really like that. I think that's what makes the game. And the art is like really zany. You'll know the puns. You know, to me, that's sort of they combined in that, uh, uh, in that sort of like I like that experience. I like it because it's really weird. It really stood out. Uh, out of everything that Sierra did at the time, it was a very unusual title. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, even like EcoQuest, you know, EcoQuest is an adventure. Uh, uh, that's what Sierra did, you know. But mm-hmm. like Castle of Dr. Brain, not just, lo- just like, it looks like they were just like, what would be cool and what would be funny? And it's just all in one game. And then in the final sequences, you have to like rearrange the books and pluck the chicken. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, it's not even a puzzle. It's just following directions. Well, if you didn't, well, if you didn't get the. Well, the thing with it is, if you didn't get the uh, the deciphering ring from the safe in the world room, then mm-hmm. you're stuck deciphering that message with pen and paper. Oh my god! Yeah, which is what I did, but wow. uh, and it actually the complexity of the instructions varies uh, with the yeah. with the difficulty. With the difficulty so, yeah. so I said it on the easiest, and I was like, oh shit, I missed the I missed the ring oh, because it's the you know you, there's a phone that rings and uh, you can unlock the thing if you uh, the key is in the word room and it, you can't backtrack I don't think so right, it's, yeah. so I think you can actually yeah. can you? you no I don't think you can you can you because can only once backtrack to the, like the maze or yeah, yeah to that's the, to the point yeah. yeah like to the point of entry throughout the floors so yeah that's it and the game is I mean really short but I really like it and I would highly recommend playing it. Um, yeah, it's a fun game. It has, like, nice art, the animations here, and then it has a few effects, you know, it, it has this awesome, crazy intro <laughs> sequence with the, the castle and the... Uh, yeah, that the, was a fun... I remember that That always impressed yeah, me. I was really impressed by, like, the the sort of 3D rendered spinning mm-hmm. key yes, in, the, yeah. in and, the head. That that always made me, like, yeah. think and it like was the, really cool. The, 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 the eyes that move, the, it's the eyes that get me, because he's, like, looking around. Uh, yeah, in, in the yeah. mountains. So it has that little theme song and stuff. So yeah, uh, the game is short, but it's very sweet, and it's not difficult. Yeah. It's not really particularly no. difficult. And the fact that you can switch uh, the difficulty at any time uh, really adds to it. So I would yeah. say that's the one that I recommend the most. Like I, I, it was a delight replaying it again. I really don't have many bad things to say about it, just because it might be a bit all over the place. But to me, that's what really makes it uh, that appealing. Okay. Well, I have a I have a semi funny story about my experience with the Castle of Doctor Brain, mm-hmm. which I remember I got it for Christmas uh, the same year that I got King's Quest Four, and this was probably probably in 1991 or 1992. And King's uh, my hard drive at the time was 200 a whopping 270 megabyte hard wow, drive. Holy crap! And I had DOS and I had Windows 3.1 installed and I had installed King's Quest 4 and then I was installing Dr. Brain and I guess I ran out of disk space on my hard drive because halfway through it gave me some error message about how I couldn't finish installing. But I could run the game. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, I guess it must have installed. So I remember I, I played 
you know, I was playing King's Quest Four because obviously it was the adventure game that I wanted to play. Right. And then I would like take breaks and play Doctor Brain, and it only would get to like the very first room. Like I'd open up the door with the copy protection, and then you'd click, and it would just hang. So I was like, oh, I guess the game is broken. But then I figured out that I couldn't have King's Quest Four and Doctor Brain installed at the same time because I didn't have enough disk space. So I had to delete King's Quest Four in order to play Dr. Brain. <laughs> so that was the sacrifice I made to play edutainment games. All right. I mean, uh, <laughs> to me, I, I like, uh, it was worth it, I hope. Yeah, sure, it was. I really enjoyed it, and I still have it now, and I've probably played Dr. Brain more than I've played King's Quest for. <laughs> Although I can't really be sure of that, but yeah. whatever. We'll, we'll say we'll, we'll leave that with a happy ending. Yeah, and uh, I guess with that, we can move on to... 1992 and and the first title immediately is is the sequel yes yeah. which was very unsubtly hinted at at the very end of <laughs> dr brain what do you mean with like a picture and the title yeah. when he comes back and he's like well i guess it's time to go to the island of dr brain now oh okay and it shows well. like the image and the the dude is like uh para yeah. parachuting down and that literally says island of dr brain like on yeah. that monitor so that's where and then it fades to white and says i'll be back yeah oh yeah that's right i forgot <laughs> Um, and Which I actually, when I first played it, I had a PC speaker, so I didn't mm -hmm. hear the music in Dr. Brain or the sound effects until years later. So, yeah. But anyway, Island of Dr. Brain, yes. Island of Dr. Brain was not See, designed by Corey Cole. No, it wasn't. It was designed by like five people. Yeah, the copy... Excuse me, the copy protection is very much at the very beginning of the game where you have to choose the coordinates to find the island of, the, of Dr. Brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Island of Dr. Brain came with this huge manual, the Encyclo Almanactionary Thingamajig, mm -hmm. which was supposed to be like a, a combination of uh, all those things that are part of the title. Um, but yeah, it, it basically served as a reference guide for the trickier puzzles, which yeah. is handy because there are a little... It has a few. Uh, it has more complex puzzles than... Yes. I, I mean, I like the puzzles. My only thing is like... What I liked about the first game is it was kind of all over the place zany. Second yeah. one feels a lot more like a streamlined collection of, of puzzles. The puzzles yeah. have a coherent theme to them always. Mm. Um, and there is less kind of like goofiness going on. There's more like, okay, now we got to just, you know, here's some more challenging, here's some less challenging, but they're kind of different but uh you know whatever so and some uh, a bunch of puzzles are reused from from the first game near the end yeah. surprisingly i mean they're, yeah they're given a slightly different spin but yes. there there are quite a few i mean the magic square gets reused mm -hmm. but it's slightly more complex it's, it's filled in too the uh, yeah the jigsaw puzzle gets used again although it's, it's in the in better form although today i was playing i was just playing it this morning and i have mistakenly clicked out of it several times like oh. three times i was almost I was almost done the first time too. When, oh, you, when no. you click out of it, you click back, and it's all from the beginning. Uh, uh, all yeah, you have to do is click I mean, on it, the bottom of the screen. It's really, it's really shitty. But uh, the jigsaw puzzle, I didn't talk. Actually, I didn't talk about with Castle. But like the jigsaw puzzle took me a lot longer because when you're on expert mode, the puzzles are. I mean, the pieces are a lot smaller, mm -hmm. and just the low res. I mean, it's not low res. Well, it is low res VGA art. Like it, it all blurs together and blends together. Yeah, so the first one also telling is, what it is, is dark. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's dark and it's hard to it's tell. It's not a good picture. Although yeah. in the island, I do like the uh, jigsaw in the island because a it's, yeah. it's animated. It's animated and it's, it's colorful. brightly colored. It's all those yeah. things. You can easily find the pieces. And also in the first one, it's actually like you know your usual jigsaw puzzle shapes, right? In in, yeah. in the island, it's all those weird. Like yeah. uh, uh, like frills and like arrows and just like edges. Like it's, yeah, they it's, get, they're all they very get distinctive crazier. pieces. Yeah. And, so yeah. I really like the pu the jigsaw. If I if only I didn't click out of it three times, uh, <laughs> I like the puzzle in island. But uh, in the castle, it's kind of I could have done without it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. whatever. But yeah, and you get your word puzzles where like yeah. it's all synonyms, anonyms, and the, the whatever the one that sounds the same. And uh, yeah, it's it's that it's it's. And this morning I stopped playing as soon as I hit the 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 liquid measuring thing, where it's like there's one thing I I hate is that the United <laughs> States have not to this day uh, appropriated the, the metric system and yeah. I, I refuse to do calculations just because of that so as soon as I hit on like okay so mercury 
is uh, weighs this much, and so I need this many gallons. I was like, fuck this noise. I, I am not solving this puzzle. It was pretty easy up until that point, and I was just yeah, like, I enjoyed well. all the word puzzles too because they're pretty creative. And um, but no, no, not happening. But uh, before that, it was what like you know, like sliding tiles, the math, the the words. They're all kind of yeah, more I mean, puzzly, a, a lot more puzzly. Puzzle. Oh yes, there's but like that was a pretty easy. Puzzle at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's more of the same, but more streamlined. And I yeah. will say that that the, I like it less because of it. Well, I mean, it's a better puzzle game, but to me, it's less entertaining. I like the puzzles in Island more. I like the music in Island more. Yes, there's a lot, a lot more music. I like the, I like the production values a little bit more. I like the fact that Doctor Brain actually talks to you and yes, he's like, "Congratulations, you, you, you won got a bronze, bronze medal in the <laughs> word uh, something yeah. associations." Yeah, yeah, it was. Pretty I mean, this story is really dumb too because it's course. like, oh, my plans for a super battery have uh, been stolen. On this island, go to my island to get them back. Like, what? Huh? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Why would I go to your island to like, you know? Yeah. And then at the end, it turns out that like his secret project is, well, spoiler alert, his secret project <laughs> is just like a chair that massages his feet or something. Yeah. It's really dumb. It's but, uh, and and the island turns out to be like a giant submarine. And also, we would like <laughs> to point out that with uh, unlike most of the games, well, most all unlike all the other games uh, in the Sierra Discovery series, this series actually stepped out of the Discovery series and continued for, yeah. for many games with many different developers. It did. It did. It, it went yeah. on not only to become like a series of Windows games, but to eventually even went to like 3D with like French developed games. It was... Oh, re- wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It, Dr. Brain series I, continued for I, longer I, than anyone cared. Yeah, I I had Lost Mind and I still have Time Warp because I haven't it went to... Do, after it, I think it actually but, still was going on while Vivendi was 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 owning the, all the Sierra stuff. So yeah, because I know I remember seeing something like Doctor Brain Games or something like that. Yeah, which seems it, like it it went on for for like almost a decade, and I don't think crazy. and I don't think anyone played them. So yeah, uh, no. The the more they went on, the at least with Time Warp and yeah, uh, yeah, lot, mind, the less mind, they became yeah, about puzzles, and the more they became like Time Warp was just completely arcade sequences yeah, the whole time, which yeah, do a shit. Yeah. But Lost Mind was okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but Island. I mean, Island came on CD also. Uh, I never played it on CD. Was it but the CD version? Because I have, I don't know. I have Castle CD of version. Doctor Brain on CD, and all it is is oh, just really? a version one point one of the game okay. on the CD. Probably the same, because I mean, it's not like there's much dialogue to do. Yeah. So, I mean, um, so, Doctor Brain himself on the disc version is fully yeah, released. yeah. He's well, we very nicely too. Now, it yeah, was a nice yeah. surprise. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, well, I guess you know I, I would recommend Island to go together yeah. together with Castle. I mean, it's a fine it's, puzzle game. It's kind of like yeah, they 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 kind of took what works in Castle and just kind of amplified mm-hmm. it a bit. And yeah, it is a bit more streamlined, but I don't know. In a way, it just I find it more enjoyable. No, person. no constellations and and plucking the chickens though. So, yeah, exactly. Unfortunately for me. <laughs> All right. So uh, also in 1992. Uh, uh, we have uh, a title that was published under Sierra Brand, but was uh, actually not developed by Sierra. No, it, it was, was developed m- by our good friend Jeff Tunnel. It's Tunnel, 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 Tunnel. Yes. Excuse so me. it was, Tunnell. and it was not even a Dynamics title. It was one of those. T- t- oh. It was when he sort of uh, left Dynamics uh, and moved into like office next door and started doing all the weird shit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was Jeff Tunnell, uh Productions, mm-hmm. and this is a title I have not heard of <laughs> ever <laughs> until I have to say, until it's last week. Most, it's probably one of the most obscure Sierra games that I own in the box, and I've seen it on eBay for like insane amounts of money. I, I'm I, like, man, I'm sitting on a gold mine. I I, I bid on it because shortly <laughs> after we we talked, two days later, somebody yeah. posted it online, and I and I was like, oh man, I'll bid like it was nothing. And I was like, I'll bid like twenty dollars. I'm even afraid to look at what it actually finally went for because I think <laughs> it eventually will cross over like sixty, and I don't even know. Um, very quickly, I got outbid on that one, but um, uh, it's I I am uh, <laughs> what are their names? <laughs> Quarky and Quasu's Turbo Science uh, is a very interesting educational title, and it I is, will say me, it's actually me, really fucking good. 
Like, yeah, it, it it it's really like the music is really nice and the game itself is really nice. The the only problem I have with it and the the only problem I ever had with it too playing it as a kid and just now when I replayed it is that it tends to get very repetitive yes. very quickly. It's it's clearly a game that's designed to be played in, in short, like short sittings. Series. Yeah. Because it also comes with a very very big manual that you often have to consult. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. But yeah, but like the way it's put or, together or, is really or cool. Or do you have just, to consult it? Can you could just guess? You can. But that's like, the thing about know. it that I like the most. It got to the point. It got to the point where I just really wanted to like in the first screen make as much money as I could, so and I then could just, just win f- the to the finish. Blast yes, through it, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. But, so I guess the, we should explain the premise of yes. Quirky and Quazu is that Quirky and Quazu are these two aliens, Quirky and Quazu Ogandi, which is very strange <laughs> they're like irish Indian. i love the names of in that game yeah they're very strange names so they're these two aliens and they're in this race these science races against like these other teams uh of bullies I, yeah the what were the what's the ones i know that the the announcer is paco de suave and he's like a little brown so, boy so, which so is the racist. first the first two <laughs> dust liquidators are uh yes dust liquidators uh, links have it my way and oh likes it yeah likes have, have it my way, way. and uh, i am never wrong yes uh yeah and yeah so that's that's that yeah then you have like these two alien lay people who yes. i forget their names and then you have this like one a, girl a, a dork. in her yeah in her bio she's australian but she's apparently a descendant of martin luther king jr which is very strange <laughs> it's a really weird game but the- yeah and, and like her text is written in this faux australian accent so it's like oh my god i got away am i and it's really really terrible but anyway, the the premise is that yeah, you're you're in this in these science races against these other teams, and basically you have to like race again on the map from like checkpoint to checkpoint, and each checkpoint you have the opportunity to like examine a scene, and in each scene there's all these things happening, and there's science related questions that you answer. Well, for well, well, here's the thing: like the, you go uh, basically the, the overall thing is like you have a map of the United yeah. States with uh, with checkpoints in them, which is randomly generated. Yeah. And depending on how much you play, the the more complex I guess it becomes, uh, and you have a competing crew. But uh, to travel from one point to the other, uh, you have about five different ways you can do it, and each one of them uh, costs, costs a certain, certain amount, and takes certain a amount certain of money. Amount of That's right. The the more expensive they are, the the faster they'll get you there. Right. And the the way you replenish your money is at every checkpoint you can stop and there's like a uh you go into this, the money earning mode where you have mm-hmm. this static scene uh full of all kinds of objects and you're just free to examine it you know uh, mm-hmm. and you can examine it by just like clicking everywhere with an eye icon uh, mm-hmm. where it will just show you like a random factoid or you can have you also have a selection of tools, which is like a tape measure, a thermometer, and stuff. Yeah. And you can also click on each one of those objects. And the scenes of and full you can of them. switch between metric in yes. <laughs> on those two. See, <laughs> and here's the thing about it too. I kind of hate when educational games make force force you to learn factoids about shit and then quiz you on it because that's how you get the money. Eventually, once you're done looking, yeah. you're like, quiz me, and the answer pops yeah, up and you and have to do like a multiple, well, multiple, it, it, multiple yeah. choice but it's like somehow this game figured out how to do that right because in that in yeah. that sort of thing it makes sense plus you can fuck up like that's the yeah. best part you can fuck up and you don't have to restart anything which means you'll just get less money yeah you just lose money if you get the answer yeah. wrong it's like and it's a, but like and, the questions are, are it's a nice variety because like yeah sometimes it'll have multiple choice questions it'll be like you know these three people in the scene like say you have like an underwater scene mm-hmm. and you have like these three guys scuba diving and it's like where is the air pressure in the water lowest or mm-hmm. whatever so you have to you know you have to use your tool you can use your tool to like check those things or like you know who has the most density mm-hmm. and you weigh them and stuff like that yeah. and it just it teaches you basic scientific yeah, and things sometimes you can just like you know like which objects of uh, in in this scene will uh will uh, uh 
um, display like it, a quality of being uh, in the gas state. You know, it's like yeah. Uh, or which of state. these is the best? The best conductor of electricity, right. or the best? Yeah. Or sometimes like it'll be something really stupid. Which one of those people yeah. is exactly five five feet two? You know, five yeah, feet two. Exactly. And you're like, well, shit! I should have measured everybody on the scene. <laughs> So well, you can also, you can, you, you can, do you can it. also pause. Yeah, and, you, it's and, all like, very nice because it, it's not punishing. That's what right. the key of that game is. Like, but the it, problem is, like I said, it gets very, very repetitive. Yeah. Like I played, because you play, you know, each race you win, you, you, it, you know, you, you get a certain thing. And then after a certain number of races, you like go up in rank. Like mm -hmm. I went from, I forget what, to Wonker, which I thought was kind of funny. Um and then like you yeah i guess the goal of the game is just to reach the highest rank or whatever but yeah it does get very repetitive yeah but uh, i still think it's a nice game especially i think yeah. you know what it will really work I'd, i as a person who've never played it when as a kid i'd say it will probably work well for for kids yeah uh, i mean especially you have, like if you it's can like also a couple adjust people. the difficulty of the questions mm -hmm. so you have like very basic science and then you have a little bit more yeah. I mean, I don't remember half of that stuff. But then again, science was never one of my favorite yeah, subjects in school. So. But I like how it's a, mo mostly it's multiple choice, and often you can just yeah. guess, and you'll be right. You know, it's like that sort of stuff. So it's yeah. I really like it, and the animations are really, really goofy. Yeah, and, I mean, it's it's basically it essentially it looks like Willie Beamish because mm -hmm. the backgrounds have, are that same style. Mm -hmm. They kind of have that sort of illustrated look, and the characters are very. I mean. They're not simple, but like they're animated. Right. They're they're very... they're just basically a lot of them are just flat colors on the surface. Yeah, very so. flat colors, no shading, mm -hmm. but they're animated very mm -hmm. you know very well. And like the interface is even a lot like Willy Beamish yeah, too. Yeah, it's, it's true. No, it, it's made in this dynamics adventure sort of yeah. thing. So yeah. And speaking of it, I it probably has to be of all of these games, it's the most '90s game I have ever played in my oh, entire yeah. life. I mean, just the title screen alone, like yeah. it's this ridiculous MIDI synth guitar, like mm -hmm. and like they fly in with the things yes. and they're on their surfboards, and it's so, and they're all wearing so... shades and uh... yeah. Oh god, it's so fucking '90s. It makes me sick. Yeah, it's but... pre it's pretty. I think I really enjoyed it. Like I wish I played uh... that game. When it came out like I really did because I honestly think out of especially coming out of the Sierra banner like I think it's one of the probably like as far as educational dialogue goes probably the most yeah. it's also like the playable most because it's in short sessions that it is be, even though it does get repetitive I think the, the gameplay is like really there yeah you know it's a I'm nice diversion. like it's, it's and also there's a there's a little Johnny Castaway Easter egg did you find it no uh, there's one scene where you see Johnny Castaway on a boat and it's like, oh, he escaped the island finally. And I was like, oh, yay! <laughs> what a nice callback to Johnny Castaway. Like right. anybody, I still have, I still have my box copy of Johnny Castaway. You do. That's pretty I impressive. Do. What a waste of money that was. But I will say, uh, and a lot of people, I don't have that game in a full, complete physical form. And a lot of people, when I started posting about it on Twitter, comment commented on on the book that it came mm. with. So. Yeah, the book that it comes with is huge. It's like a hundred and something pages. That's pretty intense. So uh, I say, if you can't pick it up, pick it up. Well, yeah. If you see, if you see, if you see it somewhere uh, like a garage sale, grab it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one day you'll be a millionaire. Uh, millionaire. Um, but speaking of difficult to find games, this next one is also very difficult to find a box copy of, and I'm. I probably because most people burned it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, I was just playing that not if only a few hours ago, and I played it a couple of years ago as well. Uh yeah, moving on to 1993, uh we got the uh, uh lost secret of the rainforest, which is essentially uh, Eco, Eco Quest, Quest 2. 2. No, it's not called. It's Eco not Quest titled 2. that, but uh, but yeah, but it's all the same characters. Well, it's it's Adam and his dad. Adam anyway. and his dad. And but Adam is now a little bit older, and he sports a, an amazing '90s bullet yeah. slash rat tail yeah. thing. <laughs> and so the premise for this story is is uh, again starts off. Uh, that's the thing with uh, Eco Quest, I guess. So it starts off somewhat realistically. So uh, Noah and Adam go to um, uh, whatever Peru. Uh, Peru, I guess, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, because Noah has some kind of a science 
thing to do environmental <laughs> environmental something he's really a very underdeveloped character in the eco quest well series. because he kind of just always disappears in the beginning yeah he's just he's the most neglectful father yeah that's you what i was just about to say i was like you, you let your that, like, kid go you like save her... atlantis almost and, yeah. and like full of full of dolphins and shit and yeah. then like he disappears into the jungle of peru like, yeah. like he spends Where's more Pro- times with natives than than with his father. I was like, Where's child protective? Well, services actually, to his to, in uh, to in his defense, though, he does go to the embassy. He's like, oh, I was like I gotta go to the embassy, and the the the, tour, yeah, but- the guide is like, oh, it's gonna take forever, and he's like, I know, so let's start it now, shall we? But uh, he goes with the guide. He doesn't. Even, he just leaves his kid there in the middle of the of yeah. the freaking third world country where there's where the, anybody could come and kidnap him. Yeah. So my my favorite thing about uh, Eco Quest Two. I mean, not to let me let yeah, me just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not to say Peru is a third world country, but the the play that the, the place where they're in looks yeah, pretty like, much, and it's full of like it, unsavory characters, like the, yeah, the two and they're screens. next to docks full yes, of like oil yeah, and pollution, all these horrible, yeah. dangerous things for a child, and he just leaves his kid there in the middle of the thing. Like, yeah. what the hell? Uh, no, agreed. You're <laughs> terrible. Yeah, he's he and Adam promptly goes to sleep. Uh, my favorite thing in EcoQuest happens right in the first like 30 seconds of the game. Oh yeah, that's It has true. the most amaz- amusing hilarious animation yes. of the customs. Uh, <laughs> there's a customs line and they're like, okay, so it's Noah and his dad, the, the villain of, of the piece, yes. uh, which is this... Slaughter, what, maximum slaughter. Is he supposed to be Australian? You know, I think he is. The more I play it, the he, more I think the he thing is. The thing is, the, there's voice clips of of him in the game. Yeah, because he goes, "This place is a sewer." But he doesn't really sound like exaggerated no. Australian. Like, he doesn't. But he looks really exaggerated. Yeah, they, 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 they give him the, the hat and, and the jacket, and he's tall. Actually, you know who he kind of looks like? He kind of looks like um, who who is that actor? I forget his name. The guy who played the warlock in Warlock. <laughs> Oh, Julian Sands? Yes, he if there was an Eco Quest movie, I would have Julian Sands playing Slaughter. Uh no, I like Julian Sands. Uh, also, what an unfortunate name for a guy. Like he, yeah. he's pretty much predetermined to be a killer of animals. Uh, from, yeah. I, I I guess something subtle there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's it, very much it very much does come from the Captain Planet school of naming yeah, your villains. <laughs> it's that and um so like in the customs line it's you the villain and this 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 fat dude in a hawaiian shirt yeah and, and the the uh the the ethnic uh uh customs, customs dude yeah. whose whose who's customs thing control consists of a desk yeah uh, he's just like all right open up the uh the suitcase and the dude like start the, yeah. the, the funky music the funny music <laughs> starts playing like like it gets like all really goofy all of a sudden like again first yeah. we saw like this plane there's a like, dramatic like music playing with like sort of 90s sort of uh, what should we call it? New age, yeah, new see, agey like, kind of thing. Happening where, yeah, like, somebody and all of a sudden, the shit. dude like pulls out like, a grandfather clock, <laughs> and, like a vacuum, and as he as as you were thinking, what the fuck? They do the genius thing, like the the and customs that, dude like breaks the fourth wall. He looks he's... right at you, and then he immediately looks underneath the desk. <laughs> Yeah. And like he, you're like, he's like, all right, that's enough of that. And he just pulls out a balloon and flies away. <laughs> as flies all away. the other characters, I love their reactions because all of them stop <laughs> and they just like watch him fly off in unbelief. And I laugh every time I see that because I think it's such a perfectly executed what the fuck gag. It really is. Like, and the rest of the game is just all downhill. <laughs> If I, <laughs> that's pretty sad. That is the high point of the game. Because I can rewatch uh, that gag over and over, and it never gets yeah. unfunny. Because it's just so. Because it's a lot of animation too for just such a throwaway gag. Like yeah, it really is. And and the, not to mention even like the musical theme too on top of it. Yeah. And it's such a, like uh, it's such a jolly like out of nowhere <laughs> thing that like the rest of the game is just so just like oh just somebody yeah. stop it. But yeah, so that's the story. So. Uh, Noah abandons his child, and, <laughs> and Adam goes sleeping in the boat, and that's when things take. And then he gets kidnapped by talking by two otters. otters, and that's when we realize like Adam can talk to all the animals and yeah. all the people in all the languages as well. Yeah, because um, he seems to have no problem communicating with the natives. Uh, and before, right before that, the device is introduced where you have uh, Noah 
opens the package with a with like a, a PDA 90s sort of style PDA that you it's huge it's like a Game Boy on a stick <laughs> yeah so you hold it's... it and and he's like there's this whole thing where the control is taken away from you and literally the cursor moves across the screen and no one's explaining how to use it you just point it at the thing and it adds it to your encyclopedia um, yes, the E quarter, it's called. Yeah, and uh, you can just point it at like most of the objects in the game, and it gives you points. Uh, yeah. And then there's an article about which you have to stop your game to go and read. Uh, yeah. If you feel like. Did it. you know you you could actually print out your uh, your E quarter facts? That's amazing. But yeah. uh, I I. This is like the edutainment thing that I hate the most, <laughs> where it's like it's such a lazy thing. Like yeah. let's have you point at those things, and then we'll give you articles about it, which you can stop your 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 graphic three D graphical adventure to to, <laughs> to to read a piece of text on the screen, you know, like and so he gets kidnapped by by otters. They give him a medallion, and from there you sort of on a on a mission to save every, everything art. because the forest is dying as it talks to you. Uh, yeah, and it just gets really. I mean, I, I was playing it this morning and I didn't finish because it fucking crashed on me. And I thought, yeah. thank God, I don't. Uh, well, how far did you get? About uh, uh, like over halfway through. Uh, did it crash at the bit where you meet the bat? Because that's where it would yes, always crash. Yes, yes, it's like where the palette changes. Uh, yeah, where, yeah, where like it fades it, out. The forest art dies and it's yes. all very dramatic, and then all of a sudden it's it like, goes into this dramatic cutscene, and that game always crashes yeah, there. Yeah, pretty much. So that's what happened, and so I think yeah. that's about halfway, right? So Yeah, so, well, then I'll allow me to to inform you and the, and the listeners of the rest of the story. So, yeah, basically the otters take you in because they're like, oh, here's this kid, because they don't know him, but they're just like, oh, well, here's he's a small human, let's take him. So, like, yeah, Forest Heart is this giant tree in the middle of the rainforest who's, like, the mother of all rainforests or whatever. And she's going, she's about to die, but, like, the life cycle has to continue and they need a seedling. But the seedling got destroyed at the beginning of the game where you see, like, the someone, you know, blowing up stuff in the rainforest, which mm -hmm. we can assume is slaughters people. So the, there's these two bats and they're all sad and they're like, oh, we need another seedling. So Adam goes and he meets the grove people who are like the indigenous tribe. And again, he has to, they're essentially the fish of this game because he has to find out what all their problems are and help them out so right. to like earn their trust. And then he like, the copy protection is the shaman like tells him, oh, you need to put this stuff on your face and that'll make you one of us or something. So then Forest Heart, the Grove people all like hang, hang out with you and they're like, oh, we have a vision and they see the vision of their old city, their ancestor city, which is the city of gold. So then you have to go there to get the seedling. But then, of course, Slaughter comes in and like sets fire to the rainforest. And then you meet the talking animal sidekick, which is Paquita, a bat who is very, very much a very bold, very like, I am a bat. I, Paquita, will help you, etc. So then that you get captured and you have to escape, which I have to say is probably the hardest puzzle sequence in that entire game, escaping from the the camp it, that where they take you. Uh, I remember having a really hard time with it as a kid because it involves this pixel hunt. Like you're you're in the back room of this. Uh, oh, and by the way, there's this terrible Mexican stereotype, even though we're in Peru for some reason. Like Slaughter's sidekick is this big fat Mexican guy named Gonzalez with an S. Oh yeah, and I took a screenshot of, of like yeah, one of the Gonzalez he, things. I was like, I'm going to throw it at you at some point. <laughs> he does this really stupid dance when you go outside, and it's like he's preparing bat stir fry, and he like just literally his dance consists of this really cheesy Mexican esque music playing while he walks back and forth and just does like these stupid poses. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. You uh you get you're tied up in this chair and you like have to escape and there's like this room full of all these dead animals and it's terrible and you have to like climb down or make a rope out of bed sheets and stuff. But then you find like this personal organizer and it's password protected. And so like you have to figure out the password in order to get the combination to the safe to get all your crap to continue. And like it's really hard because <laughs> there's this pixel like if you look at the there's this jaguar rug this jaguar pelt fur rug and it's like if you look at at the head it's like oh it looks like it has something caught in its teeth but you can't do anything so you have to know to like click on the tail and when adam presses the tail it right. spits out this piece of paper that has the password written on it and the password is rethqualls which is slaughter backwards so then you get the combination to a safe and you get that all that crap but it's really hard to like figure it out 
So, especially when you're a kid. So I was stumped on that for a long time. I'd say the but whole anyway. game is pretty hard to figure out. Like that. Yeah, it's it that's is. That's like it does my issue. Few... Like the puzzles are kind of like really. Yeah. Not it has... not obvious at all. Like... Yeah, it has some very not kid friendly puzzles. But anyway, you you escape and you have to like distract him by setting some birds free, and then you you carve a canoe out of a, a log with an axe, which I don't know how a kid would be able to do that, but he does. Uh, so then, like you, you end up escaping with the bat, and you wind up in like this underground bat cave, and then you escape, and like the bat gets sick because she's only been with you for like, I don't know, <laughs> twenty minutes or so, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, she's sick. We have to save her now. In addition to saving Forest Heart, we now forest, have to save the yes. bat. Yeah. So then you end up in like this flooded forest, and like you have to paddle around. And then this monkey, you save this monkey that you met at the beginning of the game. And then this eagle takes you and he's like, oh, you you have this gold feather that you got from this weirdo ghost panther thing underground. I'll take you to the city of gold. So then this, the eagle flies you to the city of gold. And then you have to do a maze again. Um, and you wind up there and like have to solve some puzzles. And then there's this like sea serpent and you have to like play the flute while wearing a hat so that the sea serpent falls asleep and then you get to this magical garden and you find the seedling and then guess who shows up in his helicopter oh it's slaughter and then like the plants capture him and then uh you get the seedling and you plant the seedling and all the growth people are happy and then mm. guess what the reason that the bat was sick was because she was pregnant and she had a little bad baby Aww. I'm and then, so glad my game crashed today. And then, and then you get flown back. And then he's like, well, I guess I should go back to my dad now, like, even though I saved the rainforest. And they're like, yes, Adam, thank you. You'll be, we will remember you always. And he's like, okay, well, I guess I'll go back to my dad. And then the game ends with him flying off on the, on the back of the eagle mm. while the bat and the baby bat wave goodbye at him. And we never know if he finds his father or not because they never made any more EcoQuest games. Yes. So yeah, thank God. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I I'd say, but, but yes, go go uh, go for but it. I will. I have to say, and I said this before we started recording the podcast. Mm -hmm. The one redeeming factor of this game, even though the puzzles are terrible and it's really hokey and whatever, is that it has the most beautiful art of yes. all the Sierra Discovery series. It's fucking series amazing. Games. Like uh, especially compared to all the other ones. I mean, the backgrounds are beautiful. There's yes. all these lush rainforest mm -hmm. backgrounds, and the character portraits are really nice because. They're not realistic, but they're not super cartoony. Right, right. But they're also really well drawn, mm -hmm. and they're really well animated. And even the sprites, like the sprites, yeah. are sort uh, of this uh, hybrid. There's a the thing, like with like Adam, they used even like a lot of times he's like crossing something while balancing on the thing. And they yeah. use that thing a lot, where he's like, there's a lot of switches, animation. There's a lot of variety. Like the when the otters push him, there's like animated water that's rippling, mm -hmm. like that's yeah. really you know not rendered or anything it's actually just animated as it's, it's with reflection it's it's really really cool the music too there's a lot of game, like the 90s yeah. style like new age kind of thingy and then they yeah. switch to like the you know the natives themes and whatever the thing it's like the production values are yeah. really really high especially if you compare it to the first uh eco quest oh yeah you can tell that this game came out when sierra was doing well financially mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's it really is a very well produced. Yes, game. very is. If it didn't crash, uh, it would. Be well, fun. there's that. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> like uh, they never made a voice version of it, which I guess we all should be just grateful for. And uh, well, if they had done a voice version, I think it was at the time where they probably sorry, would have hired, hired actors. actors. Yeah, so. I still kind Maybe of feel that. No, no, no. I still kind of feel that see your uh, CD-ROM well, conversions. It, the games that weren't yeah. designed to be CD-ROM games always kind of fell felt like well the thing is as you mentioned there are like maybe five lines in the whole game that are actually voiced which mm -hmm. is an odd choice but i guess they kind of wanted to give you an idea a little of bit what... something yeah yeah because like slaughter has two lines right at the beginning where he says this place is a sewer oh or whatever yeah, or yeah, something i forget uh, something else. even though it just and happened like a like, few hours ago to me i was like i don't care <laughs> yeah and uh at the very end like the native guy says oh forest heart is alive. Ho, oh, ho, also the forest talks again. to you. She's like, always yeah, yeah, remember me. Heart. Like, I'm dying, Adam. Yeah, it's she's like, yeah, like okay. remember. Yeah. She, she says, welcome, she, child. Yeah. And then she There's says, a whole bunch of things. And the e-quarter says, welcome mm -hmm. to the rainforest. Mm -hmm. Every time. Yeah. Um, but actually, Richard Aronson, the voice of Cedric the Owl, provided one of the voices. I don't know which one, but he's in there. Mm. There's like five or three or four voice actors that they credit at the end of the game for like those 
five lines that they put in. Yeah, I'd say yes. I, I mean, check it but out I mean, for, would, for, for graphics. Recommend. For graphics alone, because yeah. it's it's a really for it's a really good alone, looking Sierra game. It is, and I mean, it is a little bit difficult, but I mean, you can find a walkthrough. Yeah, and don't sure. give it, don't give it to your child to play. No, you'll probably ha- encounter problems later and on in life. Save early, save often. Oh yes, the game does like to crash it's at crash that prone. little point in the action. And yeah, and this kind of brings us uh, uh, to the final <laughs> entry. Last but not least. All right, so shall we just do an hour on this? Or maybe it is last but least. <laughs> I I am ready. I am fully prepared <laughs> to do this because I just did that what last night? No, two days ago. Yeah, I did it. I did it a couple of days. Two ago. days ago, I played through. Uh, I think for the first time in my life, actually, I played through the entirety of it. Uh, oh really? Yeah. No, I've I played through it before. Uh, the title that is known as Pepper's Adventures in Time. Yes. And where Which initially, initially, uh, I would like to point out, was not the original title oh, yeah? of this game. No, the game was originally called Twisty History, Interesting. and it was intended to be a series, which would explain well, the, ending. the ending. Yes, yes. So, but unfortunately, it was never to be. So we only got Pepper's Adventures in Time. Um, unfortunately, did you say for- well, fortunately? <laughs> Uh, oh man, it's really to tough to begin. Even like, where do we begin? Well, let's first. Where I guess let's let's begin? get something out of the way uh, because this is okay. we've talked about this briefly. The, the graphics. This is an ugly game. Yeah, the graphics, and you. I, you I find it ugly. I do not. Uh, okay. I mean, it's uh, for the reasons that it actually it's very different to what you would uh, well see ugly from is, ugly is a harsh term. It's it's un- just, unfortunate. <laughs> it's inconsistent because yeah. the backgrounds are nice. Yes. I mean they're nice they're cartoony. Not, it's a very cartoony game. It's it is very cartoony. Mm-hmm. The backgrounds are okay. They're they're nice and everything, but the sprites are just awful. Mm-hmm. I mean, the th- the problem with the sprites is that they look like they're upscaled. Like they are in a couple of places, but they mm-hmm. just look like they've been upscaled and so like you have pixels that are just like they kind of look like mixed resolution sometimes. Yeah, well, I think like, it's it's uh, I think with a lot of, like with a lot of other Bill Davis's stuff uh, is uh, p- probably scanned in from the paintings and then animated maybe. animated over that. Maybe uh, I don't know, but then it also, it just seems like the thing is like it's it just seems it does like weird. there's lack of polish. Yeah, th- it does, especially compared to like Eco Quest. Yeah, which well, has especially Eco Quest Two, which had such high gorgeous, production values. Yeah. Peppers feels unfinished yeah, in places. It's, it's, like, there's certain animations that just like shocked me at how how bad they yeah, are. Like they're pretty bad. And uh, so let's get uh, this other way because you don't like it. I like it just for the fact that it's very different uh, to anything yeah. else Sierra produced. And I don't mind the style because a lot of people shit on uh, Legion of Larry VGA for the same reasons. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of characters in Pepper's Adventures Time look like that cop that chases you. Like if you leave your yeah. fly open, like that's the cop that comes out, big nose and, and round. And, uh, yeah, and, and every. every and yeah. It, and that. Well, that's kind of. Uh, but I say like every person in the casino looks like. Yeah. That's just about everybody in Pepper's Adventures in Time. <laughs> Pretty much yeah. those those kind of designs, um, which I say are better in Leisure Suit Larry because they also have oh, yeah. stylized, you know, cubism going. So, that's... which is weird considering that Leisure Suit Larry VGA came out in like what nineteen ninety two or ninety one. Ninety one, I think. Uh, yeah. At least the so, copyright is yeah. ninety one. But it's, uh, I think it's like one of the first games Bill Davis worked on because he was in charge for the of their VGA okay. remix stuff, and he's also the producer, the producer and the. I guess the the graphic style designer for mm. for peppers. So I guess I would explain a few things. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't know if it was because because I don't remember when I played originally. Maybe it was a DOS box thing. But like, there was a whole bunch of like glitches with like walk behinds and like animations really? not for me stuttering and stuff. I don't know, maybe it was just my version. Maybe it's your you know, cycle something. You need maybe to set something. Uh, I, technically, everything worked fine for me, and uh, the game crashed only once. Uh, and oh, it, yeah. it, I reloaded and it, it went on to the rest yeah it crashed for me once too yeah. I don't remember oh I think it was when I was talking to Ben Franklin in his hot tub it, like at one point it crashed I think I so saved, as so well tapped. yeah so did I like I started saving very often so yeah. just in case So, but that was it now, wait did I just say Ben Franklin in his hot tub <laughs> what kind of a crazy thing would that be well why don't uh, we talk about the story yeah so the setup which is by the way you can do the introduction the introduction sequence is really weird it has this unique assets where Pepper and her dog 
are are walking down the street and it's like let oh, me yeah. tell you everybody who made this game it's like yeah. mrs what's your something crazy name uh, yeah. did you know that this game was designed by five designers that you know from sierra that are actually quite notable but somehow all came together to make the shitty game uh, like that's basically the opening sequence my pepper how meta you are uh yeah and they all say yeah, something well, what's stupid. funny about the opening sequence too is that you see like all the characters in her neighborhood are essentially all of the people in that she meets in mm -hmm. Oh, it, so it all could have been like an times. acid dream, which explains a lot of this of this game. The premise yeah. of this game is really weird. So you and your dog, uh, yeah, let's, Lockjaw. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you <laughs> who you also get to control. Yes, very weirdly. Game. It's really weirdly <laughs> handled how it switches uh, and yeah. very unintuitive and too way too complicated. And uh, yeah, but we'll get to that later. So basically, the premise is in the beginning of the game, you discover that. Uh, your mom's uncle uh who's been kicked out out of a <laughs> out of a nursing out home, of a nursing and, home and an institution and an institution which is never named <laughs> yeah. uh there uh is is at home and nobody likes him except for your mom so you get so to, he, yeah, he yeah, hides up in the, attic. in the attic so you climb to the attic and you see that your uncle is this insane <laughs> like crazy person who's like they were well, laughing at he, me at the institution i'll show them all and he's just like if he's your mother's uncle that makes oh yeah he's like great uncle i guess uh, yeah great, whatever so <laughs> well they all refer to him as uncle yeah uncle it's, he's just crazy frank. uncle fred yeah so it's like which it, i think was a was probably either a coincidence or they were just probably. trying to rip off maniac i Mansion. think it was a coincidence i think <laughs> I don't know what went into designing those game, this game because right there it introduced the premise where his thing is like I'm going to change the history for like the worst because I fucking I fucking hate Ben Franklin what a yeah, fucking yeah dick. he has no he's, motivation yeah he's whatsoever. just like I fuck first of all specifically he hates specifically Ben Franklin he specifically hates Ben Franklin but then here's the thing like it's not even a time machine it's a what if machine so technically he never he never calls it a time machine he's just like oh it's my what if machine yeah but his what intent if penicillin is, had never been invented which is weird it's like I why would you fucking do that yeah. yeah and it's like and then he's just like uh so the core premise in this children's game is that ben franklin is really fucking stoked like well not stoked he just he's like he? well i guess well no yeah. because he's just like let me take the Everything of the, of the 1960s. 60s, throw out, throw away all the like all the bullshit, and then he just like literally zaps yeah. Ben Franklin with it, which you see on TV. Yeah, and Ben Franklin which becomes, doesn't make sense because he's he zaps him while Ben Franklin is doing the kite and yeah. key experiment, which you then have to get him to do. Uh, yeah, so the dog <laughs> jumps in the portal. You jump after the dog, and you transport it to a colonial. America as as very apparently popular in 1993. Yeah, you go to F Philadelphia in 1764. Yeah, and it, you like the first thing is like you see some is uh, like uh there's this thing established where you like you can have the truth button that you the, yeah, the see, unique that, icon that's is the a truth cool button. Mechanic, I thought. Where you like you can click it on anything and will tell you. Well, it's false. Nobody would fucking plant grass there in the colonial times, yeah. which is like most of the things you click on it's like it's kind of false. Like the first thing yeah. you see is you you, you crack the liberty bell it's being carried by two Hare Krishnas. Yes. And it's like, well, it's like of course there weren't any. You're like, okay. Yeah. But also because everybody's very stoned uh, all, all the all the followers of Ben Franklin, which is like the thing, is like Ben Franklin is so laid back, he's not going to fight against the British. So this is the premise right. of the game. You have to make him fight against the British. Well, um, you have to. They 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 take artistic license in that they oh, have uh, this fictional governor Hugh yes. Hugh Pew too, and his daughter Ima Pew, which yeah. is well, gee, that's yeah. done more of Captain Planet school of naming your villains, um, and they basically are like taxing. They they've they've passed a false version of the stamp act uh because right. they're they're basically taxing everything everything and they're collecting the money from and they're so they, taking the money yeah, for so themselves. you have to you have to <laughs> sort of get the franklin out of his stoned mood and like uh, restore and, yeah. restore the, give the money back and and get all start the, colonists the re rebellion to realize, yeah yeah and start the rebellion uh, and all that stuff now which is yeah kind of cool concept but it's like <laughs> I Pretty just terrible execution. Uh, yeah, like yeah, like everybody who is like uh, who is like now all relaxing and hippie like starts talking like a fucking stone surfer dude. 
and it yeah. gets really fucking grating. It gets really very old really fast. quickly. Like everybody just starts talking like that, and you especially just like, considering oh that like the game God. encourages you to talk to them once every chapter about yeah. four topics. Mm-hmm. Luckily, the dialogues aren't too long winded. Yeah. So like they'll only ever say like two or three things, but it's just like it just the dialogue is so repetitive. It's just like oh Ben Franklin's sick. No, dude, don't worry, little dude. Yeah. And like oh, like, oh, oh I'm fuck. looking for my dog. Oh well. I wouldn't look too much dude because yeah. the pews have your dog whatever yeah, yeah so it's... so like once they get once they arrive like they get in trouble right away and because there's poor richard in the stocks and mm-hmm. like you help poor richard and then you get you get arrested for that and like the the pews kidnap lockjaw so basically the game becomes not only do i have to uh, you know get ben franklin out of his stupor but i also have to save, save my the dog. dog and then first thing you do is disguise yourself as a boy yeah uh, that's like the core thing where it's like every time somebody's just like well girls don't do that and Pepper's just like girls can do anything yeah exactly and exactly. Uh, there's a lot of that going on everybody's like what and yeah. uh, everybody's very stoned like really like they all like sort of describe those effects where like oh he became he's just eating in, in his bath and he's like reading all the all the bull- yeah, bullshit yeah. pamphlets so it's like it's a really strange core setup which might have been funny to someone when they were writing it like, yeah um, i guess but it, it's one of those things that definitely sounds better on paper yeah. probably um, actually in execution where it's like we were five designers like came up with that uh, yeah it's like oh. too many cooks yeah probably but yeah you basically you talk to all the colonists and you realize that all of them are stereotypical cartoon characters and all of them have a fault like yeah. one of them is is a glutton the other one is a gambler another one's like a penny pincher the mailmen are and they lazy all like current stereotypes too not yeah not like uh, old time is stereotype like the gambler is yeah. just like the dude you meet in the fucking corner basically and you're just like yeah. it's really weird like it's it's not funny in the fucking least yeah. And uh, and the, They're all very the puzzles broad. are very sometimes often puzzles are very obtuse. Uh, well, really, you think so? Because I thought, I mean, with the exception of maybe like one or two, which actually, funny story, Pepper's Adventures in Time is the only game that I've ever had to call the Sierra Hint line. Was for. that for the fucking tomato? No, no, although I forgot about that, but then I remembered. No, it was for finding the the puzzle box inside the tree oh yeah okay there's that too and uh, also i think like the the log jaws uh, escape from the room i think is like unnecessarily complicated yeah where you have I to guess. hide the key and like what kid would do it and like log jaw also can do like you know when you switch Wait, to, when you have to hide the key yeah, you 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 hide the key. Did you do it automatically? Because otherwise, it, it's taken away from you. Uh, unless you do it, if oh. you find the key first before you find the passage, you oh. you eat the key and you hide it in your dog bed. Otherwise, oh you, really? Yeah. I, I didn't hide the key. I it just it actually it has some there. branching. Like here's the thing. Like there's certain oh. things that happen. All right, let's let's backtrack a little bit. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, basically the quest is like you have to help each one of the citizens. And then you have to help them all again, and, yeah. and then you have to hand them out the, the leaflets to to all of them. So you basically, yeah, you do uh, like to each of the residents, you have to interact once throughout the chapter. So that's like the yeah. Well, I mean, basically, yeah. Chapter it's six chapters. Mm-hmm. In the first chapter, it's very short. You get arrested. The second chapter, yeah, you meet all the colonists, and yeah. like the the end of the chapter is you have to like. There's a package in the mailbox for Ben Franklin, which is a book on electricity, and like that's the copy protection. Copy protection, like, half, guys, like halfway through the game. Uh, yeah, the, the mail guy asks you questions about Ben Franklin to prove that you know him and so that you're trustworthy yeah. to to uh, take him the package, which is fine. Except a couple of the questions have to do with like Ben Franklin's later life, mm-hmm. which is kind of immersion breaking yeah. a bit but whatever well immersion breaking holy shit well uh, yeah so but anyway yeah, there's so always like the fourth wall, a lot of fourth wall breaking walls oh, yeah, the one which is like fucking insane uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, really. we'll get to that but the thing that i want to say with the chapter structure before yes. i would like to point out that there, this game does one very bullshit thing uh where before each chapter you show in the list of the two lists oh, basically yeah. of two things one is basically telling you what's required to do in this chapter another thing hints at what's going to be quizzed because at the end of each yeah. chapter you fucking get the five five or is it five or six questions it's quiz. five questions yeah, five question quiz chapter. which you better not fuck up <laughs> i was well you don't get re- you don't get punished for 
for fucking it up. You just and you don't get rewarded for getting them all right. It's just adds to your it's score. It's weird. I don't understand why it's there. And I don't know. It's, it's it. Well, it's to it's you know it's for the hardcore no, education. No, no, no. it's just like it's it's lazy. That's like how you not yeah, do the I quizzing. Know. It's like the only thing below that would be you know a quiz that stops your progress. Like that's yeah, that's well, what. Well, luckily the, it isn't. Yeah, but, it yeah. isn't. But it's still, and it's. It's it's so all over the place. I do not like the puzzles. I I do think so. Yeah, there's a, there's a few that there's are kind of dumb. There's also some pixel like, yeah, hunting. Tomato involved. one is kind of yeah, dumb. Yeah, tomato one is dumb. Uh, not very obvious at all. There's also like a couple of instances of pixel hunting where you can because of the style yeah. the game is drawn, you cannot tell what yeah. it what is it that you need to pick up. Um, and of course, there's a whole chapter where you just go to each character and give them out the leaflets. You know, like it's yeah, it's, that's it's, the, it's, that's the thing. That's chapter three. It's, so it's like a stack of leaflets, three. and you just go and you use that same thing on each character that you yeah. have to talk to. And I was like, that's lazy. You meet, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, actually, that's later. But yeah, like in chapter three, you meet Ben Franklin finally, and like it's you you have to persuade him to do the kite and key experiment. But in order to get the key, you have to like poor Richard gives you these proverbs and you're supposed to figure out which proverb applies to which person, well, which is really fine, easy because, because they're all stereotypes. At least stereotypes. you have to fucking figure out something for each other, but like the, handing and not out only, the yeah, letters, not only, handing out the letters is literally you just hand out the letters to each character. You just go to yeah, each location a, and... Well, but, but the proverbs aren't even that much of figuring it nah, out because it gives, it gives you the also gives proverb you explanation. and it gives you the meaning of each yes. proverb. It's, so it's like, you know, early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. In other words, you shouldn't be lazy. Yeah. Gee, who do I know that's lazy? Yeah. Oh, this guy over here. Let's give it to them. Uh, it also has... Uh, so that's basically the core of the game. And then sometimes yeah, so you, you get... Yeah, cure, so you cure, for lack of a better term, the colonists. Yeah. But they're still like, oh, but Ben Franklin still says, you know, until we hear it from him, we're yeah. still just going to... We're going to try and improve our lives, but whatever. And so then, then once you, you help get Ben, ben Franklin, Franklin... Which is like requires you to collect a whole bunch of items... Yeah. Uh, to he's like, okay, I'm not a stone. I'm I'm stone, but I'll help you out because you brought all the shit here. And he gets right. zapped by lightning, and yeah. and that and that that that, that, that clears you. Which is, hey, kids, if you want to fucking THC out of your body, just, just make sure <laughs> just make make sure you climb a very tall tree during the storm, or just make a laden jar and yeah. just keep it around. <laughs> oh yeah, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, occasionally you get switched to play as Log Joe the dog, and yeah. you have like the same actions. Your interface changes to the dog interface, so you can look at things, you can smell things, you can eat slash bite, bite things. things. <laughs> Which yeah. is also used to pick up the items. You like eat the yes. items, which is like, appear in your inventory, which carries the fleece, which do you even need? Is it just a joke? Yeah, there's a no. There's an alternate thing. There's some run. branching. Like here's the thing that I noticed. Yeah. Like also, what sometimes happens twice throughout the game, you get zapped to a different period yes. of Ben Franklin's life, which makes very little sense. Once yeah. to earlier into boyhood, and once to later when they sign the Constitution. Yes. And uh, <laughs> both of those things feature somewhat of a branching thing because each yeah. one of those things have to do with an object that you could have picked up or missed yeah. um, uh, uh, earlier. Well, you get in them the anyway. You get them anyway. Uh, basically and you have time to find it in the first did one. Did you, by the way, did you fail the, the bit with the when he's a little boy? No, why? How would I fail? Oh that? my god! Okay, well I'll talk about that in a little bit. Well, why? But, why? Oh, I'll tell you why. Well, go, let's, no, continue, I mean, let's finish telling the story first. <laughs> Just to wrap it up, but yeah, like in the fourth chapter, you have to like rally the colonists, and then the fifth chapter, you basically it becomes the escape the the mansion because it turns out that I'm a pew basically like does horrible things to her dogs where she like yes. dyes them yeah. different colors. I like that reveal. She has like a she has like a secret uh, passage yeah. in her room, which is like old, just like a. a Doggy a, color, yeah, and plaques with the, like yeah, and then when yeah. you like sm it, try to smell it, it's like. Like Joe doesn't want to know what that smells like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, so then it, it, then you know, like Pepper has to go into the mansion and save Lockjaw. And there's a maze. There's a maze. Lockjaw, there's two mazes, kind of like one without the hints. Yeah. And one and where you can use Lockjaw to just just smell smell the way out. Which is, why would you yeah. do it? Just let me let me out. Just, yeah, exactly. But anyway, um, yeah. But then, uh, so then at the end, yeah, like you know, Ben Franklin and they all. Everybody lives happily ever after because they they succeed in getting rid of the pews. But they're like, well, but you know, stuff. They're still might. They're still gonna pass the stamp tax, so we're gonna have to go fight against it. And then Pepper gets pulled out of there, and Fred's like, I'm gonna send you to the Ice Age, ha ha ha. And then it ends. Bam, and the credits roll like literally. It's, was, it's such yeah, a well, such an abrupt ending. Yeah, 
Well, there was supposed to be a sequel, but that never happened. I still would like to at least maybe one of the stories to wrap up a bit more coherently yeah. before we move it on to the fucking ice age. But yeah, so what about yeah. so twice you travel to different periods and and oh, but well, I also wanted to mention the really stupid thing where when Pepper opens the safe and she finds the bag of money, it's okay. marked with the words "people's money" on it, which I thought was really really stupid, but also hilariously cartoony. Mm. So yeah, at the end, Ben Franklin's like, well, we have this letter that you found, which is from the king, which is, you know, very incriminating, but do you have anything else? Yeah. And she's like, here's, oh, here's a bag, a of, bag of money. money. Yeah. <laughs> and it says people's money on it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so yeah, so you get taken back in time to Ben Franklin as a boy in order to get the kite, and you go forward in time to get chocolate mm-hmm. for, <laughs> yes. for a thing later. But so, okay, so I had always played the game i mean i've played the game like maybe two or three times and i always you know solved all the puzzles correctly Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of timers in this game Mm -hmm. like some of them don't really have i mean they're pretty meaningless because you can't really i mean you can fail the game but again like you know you there's try Mm -hmm. again i also like i have to point out that i really like the fail thing because it starts off with like a view of the white house with yeah the and then starts and it's turns like, to british da, 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 yeah. Da, da. yeah then it turns into the british and, starts and then playing and then they're like safe. both the both pepper and uh and Lockjaw pop up and yeah, pepper's like, like oh, oh <laughs> shit how we would do this and it actually does the sierra thing which pertains to its specific thing yeah. like how would we ever get out of this pickle Lockjaw? and you know yeah. you just and then you it start. actually gives you like a little hint yeah. which is cool but yeah so i like that yeah, that, that's, I also that's actually a, like that. as goofy as they are. I do like the close-ups of the characters because they're consistent yeah, with that. With the that design, the character portraits are okay. They're like all blinky and stuff, and like yeah. they have different expressions sometimes. Like Pepper has that like side tilt where just like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know, like that sort of thing. And it's like, yeah, yeah. so it's okay. Uh, it's not all bad. Yeah. But anyway, there's, yeah. a, there's a bunch of time sequences throughout the game, which a lot of them, I mean, if you fail them, again, it just gives you the option to try again. Some of them are just there for the sake of interactivity. Some of them are just, you know, the stuff happens regardless mm-hmm. if you interact or not. But like, for example, uh, when the butler, when you're playing as Lockjaw and you're in, in the room and the butler comes in with your bath, you can bite him or you can use the fleas on him. And oh, then that okay. gets him. that's the only use of the fleas that I know of. But if you wait too long for the timer, Lockjaw like automatically bites him. But I guess because I was playing in DOSBox and I, you know, you adjust the cycles and everything, the, the timers were a little bit faster for me. So in the sequence where you have where you go back to Ben Franklin's boyhood, there's the whole puzzle at the beginning where like he's swimming and you have to scare away the mean boy who's taking his clothes right. and stuff. And then you're like in his father's candle shop and you have you Which know, is like it has a joke where he's like, Oh man, he's naked. Uh, yeah, it's actually right. spells naked, but you know, like the most and, ri- yeah, with the most uh, ridiculous yeah. fucking way. Yeah, I hate that. That's yeah. ridiculous. But anyway, so like the first time you talk to actual Ben Franklin in the quote unquote present right. time, um, he gives you these strings, which is like, why would I need strings? But then it turns out that like Ben Franklin forgot, little boy Ben Franklin forgot to go into town to get wicks for the candles. So like he comes out and he's like, oh, thank you for, you know, we had dinner or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then his father's like, Benjamin, did you get me my wicks? And he's like, oh no, I forgot to get the wicks. Quick, help me or my father will thrash me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I always, you know, just gave him the wicks, mm-hmm. but I waited too long. And, you know, you give him the, I mean, the, the correct solution is, you know, you give him the wicks, you get your point, and he comes, he gives it to his father, and he's like, oh, well, thanks. And he comes back, and he brings you the kite, and he's like, oh, here, take this as a, you know, in gratitude for helping me out, mm-hmm. whatever. But it, you can actually wait too long and not give him the wicks, and then he walks back into the living room, and he's like, oh, father, please forgive me, I didn't bring the wicks. And he's like, why, you little, and he beats him. You hear, <laughs> you hear the noise, whoosh, and he goes, ah! And not only does this happen once, not twice, but like four times. <laughs> it's just like, whoosh, ow, whoosh, ow, whoosh, ow. And then he comes back anyway with the kite and he's like, here, take this kite. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, Ben. I wish I could have helped you. And he's like, it's okay. My father didn't cause me much pain. I just feel bad that I disappointed him. I'm like, this is really <laughs> fucking dark for a kid's game. Yeah, uh, the whole Man, game is not very child by... friendly. Like, the, <laughs> starting with the stereotypes to, I guess, the archetypes to, to, yeah. to like, I mean, the whole stone fucking thing. Uh, just, and then, uh, of course, there's this thing where it's like, hmm. Well, uh, Ben Ben Franklin's like, where has my wife gone? Like, we can't oh, find yeah. her. Which is like, I I have not figured that out. Uh, 
Oh yeah. By the way, I forgot to mention that yes, poor Richard is actually his wife yes. in disguise. Which that was the puzzle that that I couldn't figure out because like I had the clothes with the the carpet bag mm -hmm. full of her clothes. Because you pick it up to, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. You need to show that to her, but you also need to give her love the letters, letters. Yes. Which are hidden in a puzzle box, which is a sliding tile puzzle, which is a difficult sliding tile puzzle. Let me tell you, because I had to use the help the hint thing. Luckily, it has a help button that, that solves, solves it for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there's love letters in that, which you get from a tree, which is it behind a, a paper that before yes. the whole game told you you don't want to tear it down, but apparently it's waving in the wind like two pixels yes. in the sport in the fourth act. So yeah, I had to I had to call the hint line to figure that out. But there's also several Monty Python references which there is, I thought were ridiculous. Yeah. Like right at the beginning there's a the dead parrot one. The, there's a complete yeah, rip off of the dead parrot thing. And then when you're talking to the big fat glutton guy, like she's like, "Oh, what have you eaten today?" And oh, he yeah, tells you like, all this like, stuff. There's, there's like a like, list of like blah, blah, five blah. pages long. Yeah, like five pages of crap and then he's like, "And a wafer thin mint." Yeah. And uh Oh, what was the other one? There was another one that I was just like... Oh uh, I didn't catch it because at one point I just stopped reading the dialogue. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I cannot handle this anymore. Like, literally, the dialogue is 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 bad. Like, a lot yeah, of dialogue is beyond bad. bad. We're just like, they so proudly parade who have written yeah, all the dialogue. Like and we're just all. like, I'll, I'll, I do like Phantasmagoria too, so I'm gonna, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna give it a pass, but peppers holy fuck yeah. like all the dialogue gets old very old very quickly like everybody's almost intolerable to talk to yeah. it's bad it's really bad yeah not to mention then there's also those two kid contest winners who they didn't even bother cartoonizing they just kind of slapped their heads on that is just line. so fucking bizarre and the fact you know what has to be really bizarre what where are those kids today Sierra did that with King's Quest V. They had the the kid in the actually also in a bakery. So I guess if you win contests for Sierra games, you <laughs> go to a bakery. bakery. But yeah, because the the mother and that her son moment is just so fucking bizarre, especially because they start yeah. crying. So they hear those animated tears, yeah. like <laughs> fountain tears. Oh, it's just like I was just like, what happened? Like uh, yeah, as if I, this game I, I was not was not like crazy fucking just shitty enough like that's yeah. like a cherry on top um yeah yeah so so anything else you'd like you'd like to um, add i really wish i could remember what the third monty python reference was i know i'm gonna remember it like two in the morning and be like god damn it i should have said something but Sweet. no i know that it was the dead parrot the meaning of life guy mm -hmm. the big fat guy and something else mr but... creo so uh yeah i should have written them down yeah yeah, so that's Pepper's Adventures in Time. I mean, a very unusual yeah. title, I guess, all around it is. for Sierra. Just not oh, very successful. Oh, I also wanted to mention uh -uh. one thing about Pepper's Adventures in Time. Yes. When I was in eighth grade, our final exam in history was we had to write about Benjamin Franklin. Oh, man. And we were only supposed to write about what we had learned about in class, which we didn't even write like half of or learn half of what the game taught me so i got an a plus and extra credit for writing all the extra crap that pepper's adventures in time taught me about benjamin franklin holy so, shit so it was actually it, education it, it actually was it, education. It, it, it achieved uh, it achieved this goal yeah. it did i remember because i wrote about the kite key experiment and i wrote about the Leyden jar and i wrote about all the other stuff that like you know wasn't necessary that we didn't learn so i was like i yeah it was like wow you know a lot about ben franklin i was like yeah because video games <laughs> see kids video yeah. games can be helpful yeah uh, especially historical ones yeah, you should yeah. play more historical even video the fucking games. even hint, hint. oh nudge nudge <laughs> wink wink uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah oh yes um uh, <laughs> Yeah. See, we've come full circle. <laughs> yes, it was uh, like this is the game that fucking ah uh, oh, man, I don't know. Yeah. I I cannot really recommend it, especially I I cannot. I mean, it's again is a curiosity because it's such an unusual title all around between the art style and the yeah. content and just the, f the the fact that they let somebody write this dialogue and they were like, well, yeah. that's fine, yeah. uh, which is yeah. <laughs> Although I have to say, the music is nothing really special, but there's a couple of tunes that I really like. Yeah, like yeah. the the music, uh, like right at the beginning, it kind of like cues in cute. those like little themes here and there when like yeah, so you like start talking to people, whatever they start playing yeah, and yeah. they go away, and you're like, oh, those were nice. Yeah, and then there's like variations on them, like when you solve their problems, mm -hmm. they're like a nicer 
version. But I like at the beginning, there's like a little iMuse-esque thing, which is completely broken in Scum VM, by the way. But like, there's the bass tune when you're walking around in the yard with Pepper and Lockjaw. And like when Pepper walks around, there's like a little supplemental melody that's like with a little flute Mm -hmm. thing. And with Lockjaw, it's like a harmonica. But uh, yeah, I really like like the tunes for the 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 mean lady <laughs> that yes. uses the pebbles and yeah. like yeah, it's uh, it's it's you know, I mean, it's not a great game, but it's not terrible. No, I mean, it's not. It's, I mean, none of those games are really terrible. It's just like they're all kind of annoying. Like a, yeah. a lot of them have like, there's a lot of those annoying elements where yeah. where you just like I wish just that wasn't there. But like uh, yeah. they all have certain qualities about them and just as a curiosity i guess you can look it up and of course if you actually grew up with those games you probably don't have all you know as many issues as as i do with them now um i mean i also played some of those games uh, like at least half of them when i was when i was young and uh you know didn't judge them as as harshly as i as i do now so you know it's all it's they're all very playable you know, yeah. that's sad. I, I've played a lot worse games, so and especially educational games. Holy crap! There's there's a lot of <laughs> really bad educational games out there. Not that many good ones. So yeah, um, those and these. And as far as history based education, oh yeah, there's not, go, not a, lot. Is yeah. a lot. Of, it's not like that other one that I played where you had to like, I forget. You had to like upload things to a modem at the end of each case. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Wow, well, I don't know what which one you're it's talking. a DOS game. I'm not, but I'm not. I'm not an expert in in edu- I think it was entertainment like time writers or something. I don't even know. Huh. But anyway, interesting. Yeah. But that's the <laughs> that's the Sierra um, yeah, Discovery that's... series, which lasted the total of two years. Yeah, and for six games. That's so. not bad, actually. I mean, I guess if I'm you think blah, about blah. it, six games in two years. That's pretty decent. I mean, one of them was is not by the same company, and true. Uh, Two of them are sequels. Yeah. So it only it started like three unique properties, I guess. Yeah. Uh, inside of Sierra. So yeah, kind of, but also considering Sierra's, you know, sort of whole body of work, this is not really much by Sierra standards. I mean, the only things that are like, uh, you know, code name Iceman, there's just like a a, oh, a a flop, and people want to forget about, <laughs> and doesn't even have any games go after yeah. it. But it's like. Uh, honestly, in the CR kind of thing, there's, uh, you know, there's, they usually they stretch things. So uh, mm. I don't know how well I, I have no data to say how much they sold or whatever. I guess not that much because CR is used to milking everything. So yeah. uh, I guess those weren't big uh, successes. Except I guess except for Doctor Brain because that went on for a lot longer. Than it should have. Yeah, it definitely did. So there's that. Do you have anything to add about? This whole thing? Uh, no, no. Aside from just yeah, play them if you must, and if you mustn't, then you don't, don't. <laughs> You're not missing. If out you on mustn't, anything. we already played them for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We suffered for you. Yeah, I have. The last the last <laughs> few days have been very painful for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I did learn, like you know, in Peppers, like I was like, I I I generally dig the the graphics as unpolished as it is i was just like mm, yeah. you know what I, I i enjoy the unusualness of it you know like it doesn't mm-hmm. even feel like a cr game at times which i was like well that's pretty commendable you know and i was like I, so like i appreciated that a bit more and i appreciated dialogue a little bit less so there's yeah. always that kind of thing of course you know the, the eco quest 2 i i i think is gorgeous and uh uh turbo science is is a t- new title that i discovered that's actually fun and island you know i can i played island and it was fine castle of course i love and first eco quest is the first eco quest so yeah this, <laughs> oh pepper peppers also has a puzzle where you have to uh get a key from the other side of the door with a stick yes, it does. and a magnet very much so, so all these edutainment games are basically excuses to take the most hated adventure game puzzles twice. It and actually put has them a, in. it has a, it has that puzzle twice because uh, because the first time you open the oh, yeah, house and then the right, second yeah. one you switch to Logjaw to pull yeah. out to pull out the key. That's another thing. Like switching to Logjaw is is done kind of arbitrarily. Yeah. Like something happens and all of a sudden you Logjaw, and then yeah. almost very shortly after that you're back to playing Pepper. Yeah. And there is no real indication of when and why this is happening. Like it's always very confusing when Logjaw sequences end, where you're just like. Well, yeah. what what now? And then, of course, at the end, you you get full control of him to you know to get you out of a maze, which is really stupid. Yeah. Um, 
because uh, it also has a stupid animation where he gets up and he's like over here like couldn't he yeah. just like bark once or something like let's speed this up because I just I... well no because he, he do, you don't want him to make noise oh that's true yes yeah, so I thought about that too because I was like <laughs> oh yeah there is no noise but couldn't it have been handled in some other way than that, that rid- yeah, yeah, ridiculous yeah. animation he didn't have to yeah he could have just walked to the center of the room and like pointed with his yeah. nose or, or something or like wiggle his tail or something up. yeah it's like yeah. it's unnecessary but yeah so oh. so there's that yeah Oh well, yeah. that's Sierra Discovery. We discovered that we hate them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we knew as much going in, but hey, hey, Castle of Dr. Brain, still fucking awesome. Yeah. Not gonna knock that one. I really like it. Uh, as short as it is, I wish it was about twice the length. That would be like the perfect uh, thing. But also, that came kind of like in between the Quest for Glory games, right? So, for, for like, it yeah. was right. It came out. Uh, like, uh, when the right remake between, was coming uh, out. The remake and. Uh, so yeah, and, it came out before Wages of War. Yeah, so like um, right in between, like the uh, so I guess Corey Cole had his hands full, and he managed to actually design that game too. So it's like yeah. he had the remake and and the third game too. So it's like um, very interesting. So there, there's always that. Um, and let me, I'm gonna look at the scores on on Marvel games and see which one has the highest. <laughs> and it's actually Turbo Science with four point sixty two. Oh wow! Uh, with the Castle of Doctor Brain. Second at four, four point oh seven with and with the rest falling, be, you know, under four. Which is the lowest rated? Uh, the lowest rated is actually Pepper's Adventures in Time. I knew it. With three point forty one, I'm surprised that it's not Eco Quest Two actually. Uh, um, which is I would say as a game, Eco Quest Two is better than. Pepper's is this really Adventures. another thing that I think we we haven't brought up about eco quest 2 is like it's really fucking boring that's that's my thing yeah. about it like you just kind I, of like the first one at least had like oh there's a stoner fish there's a turtle <laughs> thing and it, it had those things that were really weird but it was it was keep you entertained like second game is just you wandering around the locations and it's like oh i i'm not lazy i just don't have the tools and like on but the, at on the, the same screen, time like, like eco quest 2 feels a lot more epic than the first one yes well of course because nothing fucking small happens and in very the first one. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah first one like ends very abruptly and nothing really yeah. happens and you it's all around centered on like five locations yeah. So second, the yes. second one feels like you're actually going on like this big journey, and there is more of an epic resolution. But I don't to the feel it while playing the game. Like the game itself is kind of just like everything is mm-hmm. really low key. Like I don't. Well, you technically you've only really played half the well, game. Well, I played the you? game before. Like, it's oh, right, like right, right, so right. it's like I only played it like now half the game today just to refresh my mind because I originally didn't even yeah. plan on playing Eco Quest Two because I was like I played it recently and it was uh, yeah. like I remember it, but I was like oh fuck it let me let me fire it up again. So like I did it this morning and then it crashed. I was like well. That, that there goes that um <laughs> uh, but yeah save early save often as always yeah. but uh yeah yeah there it is well uh yep. I, I guess this is it good sir good all right sir well uh, thanks for having me on your podcast uh, it's it's been a pleasure maybe we can do it uh again we sometime. can finally do that one about apogee platformers let's see unless somebody else volunteers <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, unless yeah okay well i call dibs on that it's fine that's fine um do, do you uh have anything you'd like to to plug before we part ways? Uh, sure. If you'd like to play a game, if you're interested in low res point and click adventure games that aren't Pepper's Adventures in Time and are about history, you can check out my uh, recently released game, A Golden Wake, which is available on Steam and GOG and uh, Humble, Humble but Store. <laughs> probably better to get it on. Uh, well, get it on Humble Store if you if you want to help me out, but. Uh, just go to goldenwake.com if you want to check it out um, and yeah and if you want to uh, yeah I guess do that All right. <laughs> please Okay. Well, <laughs> and listen to my podcast the Blue Cup Tools podcast yes if you're interested uh, I plugged your po- podcast on mine so now I'll plug mine on yours I don't know if I did I ever plug your podcast of mine although uh, the, I don't know. the 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 other the co-host of of the blue cup tools podcast ben chandler oh, yeah, has been on podcast. my podcast twice in in, yeah. in a very well received episode so if you would like to hear more of of ben talking you know less about first person shooters yeah more about <laughs> more adventure, about adventure games. games this is this is the podcast that you want to hear that is, yes uh, it's a weekly and, and talk is nice he really rants more than yes, anything else yes yes there's so. a lot of uh uh, lots of discussions of 
tropes and and designs yes. uh, suggestions as well as very good critique and sometimes even occasional critique of a of of a, of a classic title uh, uh comes in and it gets very emotional uh, yes and don't mention david cage or else then everything goes to hell or roberta williams ah! <laughs> so there is that actually uh, uh where can people uh find you in a in a uh, oh, world wide well, web can, if they you want can, to uh, yeah just look up uh, on twitter bct underscore podcast or yeah that's probably easier than anything else there's a link to the actual rss feed and stuff there or you can look on itunes it's also on itunes just look up blue cup tools all right and you personally me personally i am at grundislav games that's g-r-u-n-d-i-s-l-a-v games on twitter uh or you can go to grundislavgames.com and check out all my freeware games okay excellent and uh you can find me uh, at Das Nostalgic on Twitter. You probably already knew that, or anywhere else where you can just do a search for Das Nostalgia. And uh, if you have a topic that you would like to do a podcast on, just hit me up, and uh, one day you can be here talking about old Das games that we all hopefully love. Well, this is it. Thank you <laughs> again for being here, sir. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It has definitely been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been fun. And uh, to all of you out there, remember your video game roots and play more DOS games, please. They're good for your soul if you think you have one. If you don't, just, just play them. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. And this is it. And hopefully we'll see each other again on this DOS Nostalgia podcast. Goodbye. Thank you.